a paraphrase and notes on the Epistle of Saint Paul to the Romans. The Epistle of Saint Paul to the Romans, written in the year of our Lord 57, of Nero 3. Synopsis Before we take into consideration the Epistle to the Romans in particular, it may not be amiss to premise, that the miraculous birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ, were all events, that came to pass within the confines of Judea, and that the ancient writings of the Jewish nation, allowed by the Christians to be of divine original, were appealed to, as witnessing the truth of his mission and doctrine, whereby it was manifest, that the Jews were the depositaries of the proofs of the Christian religion. This could not choose but give the Jews, who were owned to be the people of God, even in the days of our Saviour, a great authority among the convert Gentiles, who knew nothing of the Messiah, they were to believe in, but what they derived from that nation, out of which he and his doctrine sprung. Nor did the Jews fail to make use of this advantage, several ways to the disturbance of the Gentiles, that embraced Christianity. The Jews, even those of them that received the gospel, were for the most part, so devoted to the law of Moses and their ancient rites, that they could by no means, bring themselves to think, that they were to be laid aside. They were, everywhere, stiff and zealous for them, and contended that they were necessary to be observed, even by Christians, by all that pretended to be the people of God, and hoped to be accepted by him. This gave no small trouble to the newly converted Gentiles, and was a great prejudice to the gospel, and therefore we find it complained of, in more places than one, vid. Acts 15. 1, 2 Corinthians 11. 3, Galatians 2. 4, and 5. 1, 10, 12, Philippians 3. 2, Colossians 2. 4, 8, 16, Titus 1. 10, 11, 14, and 100. This remark may serve to give light, not only to this epistle to the Romans, but to several other of St. Paul's epistles, written to the churches of converted Gentiles. As to this epistle to the Romans, the apostles' principal aim in it seems to be, to persuade them to a steady perseverance in the profession of Christianity, by convincing them, that God is the God of the Gentiles, as well as of the Jews, and that now, under the Gospel, there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. This he does several ways, by showing, that, though the Gentiles were very sinful, yet the Jews, who had a law, kept it not, and so could not, upon account of their having the law, which being broken aggravated their faults, and made them as far from righteous, as the Gentiles themselves, have a title to exclude the Gentiles, from being the people of God, under the gospel, that Abraham was a father of all that believe, as well uncircumcised, as circumcised, so that those, that walk in the steps of the faith of Abraham, though uncircumcised, are the seed, to which the promise is made, and shall receive the blessing, that it was the purpose of God, from the beginning, to take the Gentiles to be his people under the Messias, in the place of the Jews, who had been so, till that time, but were then nationally rejected, because they nationally rejected the Messias, whom he sent to them to be their king and deliverer, but was received by but a very small number of them, which remnant was received into the kingdom of Christ, and so continued to be his people, with the converted Gentiles, who altogether made now the church and people of God, that the Jewish nation had no reason to complain of any unrighteousness in God, or hardship from him, in their being cast off, for their unbelief, since they had been warned of it, and they might find it threatened in their ancient prophets. Besides, the raising or depressing of any nation is the prerogative of God's sovereignty. Preservation in the land, that God has given them, being not the right of any one race of men, above another. And God might, when he thought fit, reject the nation of the Jews, by the same sovereignty, 
whereby he at first chose the posterity of Jacob to be his people, passing by other nations, even such as descended from Abraham and Isaac, but yet he tells them, that at last they shall be restored again. Besides the assurance he labors to give the Romans, that they are, by faith in Jesus Christ, the people of God, without circumcision, or other observances of the Jews, whatever they may say, which is the main drift of this epistle, it is farther remarkable, that this epistle being written to a church of Gentiles, in the metropolis of the Roman Empire, but not planted by Saint Paul himself, he, as apostle of the Gentiles, out of care that they should rightly understand the gospel, has woven into his discourse the chief doctrines of it, and given them a comprehensive view of God's dealing with mankind, from first to last, in reference to eternal life. The principal heads whereof are these, that, by Adam's transgression, sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death reigned over all men, from Adam to Moses, that, by Moses, God gave the children of Israel, who were his people, one. e. Owned him for their God, and kept themselves free from the idolatry and revolt, of the heathen world, a law, which if they obeyed they should have life thereby, one. e. Attained to immortal life, which had been lost by Adam's transgression, that though this law, which was righteous, just, and good, were ordained to life, yet, not being able to give strength to perform what it could not but require, it failed, by reason of the weakness of human nature, to help men to life. So that, though the Israelites had statutes, which if a man did, he should live in them, yet they all transgressed, and attained not to righteousness and life, by the deeds of the law. That, therefore, there was no way to a life left to those under the law, but by the righteousness of faith in Jesus Christ, by which faith alone they were that seed of Abraham, to whom the blessing was promised. This was the state of the Israelites. As to the Gentile world, he tells them, that, though God made himself known to them, by legible characters of his being and power, visible in the works of the creation, yet they glorified him not, nor were thankful to him, they did not own nor worship the one, only, true, invisible God, the creator of all things, but revolted from him, to gods set up by themselves, in their own vain imaginations, and worshipped stocks and stones, the corruptible images of corruptible things, that, they having thus cast off their allegiance to him, their proper lord, and revolted to other gods, God therefore cast them off, and gave them up to vile affections, and to the conduct of their own darkened hearts, which led them into all sorts of vices, that both Jews and Gentiles, being thus all under sin, and coming short of the glory of God, God, by sending his Son Jesus Christ, shows himself to be the God both of the Jews and Gentiles since he justifieth the circumcision by faith, and the uncircumcision through faith, so that all, that believe, are freely justified by his grace, that though justification unto eternal life be only by grace, through faith in Jesus Christ, yet we are, to the utmost of our power, sincerely to endeavor after righteousness, and from our hearts obey the precepts of the gospel whereby we become the servants of God, for his servants we are whom we obey, whether of sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness. These are but some of the more general and comprehensive heads of the Christian doctrine, to be found in this epistle. The design of a synopsis will not permit me to descend more minutely to particulars. But this let me say, that he, that would have an enlarged view of true Christianity, will do well to study this epistle. Several exhortations, suited to the state that the Christians of Rome were then in, make up the latter part of the epistle. This epistle was writ from Corinth, the year of our Lord, according to the common account, 57, the third year of Nero, a little after the second epistle to the Corinthians. Sect. 1. 
Chapter 1. 1, 15. Introduction, Contents, with his profession of a desire to see them. Text, 1 Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, 2, which he had promised to four, by his prophets, in the holy scriptures, 3 concerning his son Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh, for and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the Spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, 5 by whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, 6 among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ, 7 to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. 8 First, I thank my God, through Jesus Christ, for you all, that your faith is spoken of, throughout the whole world. 9 For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit, in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. 10 Making request, if by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey, by the will of God, to come unto you. 11 For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end you may be established. 12 That is, that I may be comforted together with you, by the mutual faith both of you and me. 13 Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. 14 I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. 15 So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. Paraphrase 1 Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the preaching of the gospel of to God which he had heretofore promised, by his prophets, 3 in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son Jesus Christ our Lord, who according to the flesh, 1. e. as to the body, which he took in the womb of the Blessed Virgin, his mother, was of the posterity for and lineage of David, according to the Spirit of Holiness, 1. e. as to that more pure and spiritual part, which in him overruled all, and kept even his frail flesh holy and spotless from the least taint of sin, and was of another extraction, with most mighty power declared to be the Son of God, by his resurrection five from the dead, by whom I have received favor, and the office of an apostle, for the bringing of the Gentiles, everywhere, to the obedience of faith, comma six which I preach in his name, of which number, one e. Gentiles, that I am sent to preach to, are ye who seven are already called Pilcro, and become Christians, to all the beloved of God Pilcro, and called to be saints, who are in Rome, favor and peace be to you from God at our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. In the first place, I thank my God, through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole nine world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with the whole bent of my mind, in preaching the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I constantly make ten mention of you in my prayers, requesting, if it be God's will, that I may now at length, if possible, comma eleven have a good opportunity, to come unto you, for I long to see you that I may communicate to you some spiritual gift, for your establishment in the twelve faith, that is, that, when I am among you, I may be comforted together with you, both with your thirteen faith and my own. This I think fit you should know, brethren, that I often purposed to come unto you, that I may have some fruit of my ministry, comma fourteen among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I owe what service I can do, to the Gentiles of all kinds, whether Greeks or barbarians, to both the more knowing and civilized, 
and the uncultivated fifteen and ignorant, so that, as much as in me lies, I am ready to preach the gospel to you also, who are at Rome. Sect 2 Chapter 1 16 2 29 Contents St. Paul, in this section, shows, that the Jews exclude themselves from being the people of God, under the gospel, by the same reason that they would have the Gentiles excluded. It cannot be sufficiently admired how skillfully, to avoid offending those of his own nation, St. Paul here enters into an argument, so unpleasing to the Jews, as this of persuading them, that the Gentiles had as good a title to be taken in, to be the people of God, under the Messias, as they themselves which is the main design of this epistle. In this latter part of the first chapter, he gives a description of the Gentile world in very black colors, but very adroitly interweaves such an apology for them, in respect of the Jews, as was sufficient to beat that assuming nation out of all their pretenses to a right to continue to be alone the people of God, with an exclusion of the Gentiles. This may be seen if one carefully attends to the particulars, that he mentions, relating to the Jews and Gentiles, and observes how, what he says of the Jews, in the second chapter, answers to what he had charged on the Gentiles, in the first, for there is a secret comparison of them, one with another, runs through these two chapters, which, as soon as it comes to be minded, gives such a light and luster to St. Paul's discourse, that one cannot but admire the skillful turn of it, and look on it as the most soft, the most beautiful, and most pressing argumentation, that one shall anywhere meet with, altogether, since it leaves the Jews nothing to say for themselves, why they should have the privilege continued to them, under the gospel, of being alone the people of God, all the things they stood upon, and boasted in, giving them no preference, in this respect, to the Gentiles, nor any grounds to judge them to be incapable, or unworthy to be their fellow subjects, in the kingdom of their messias. This is what he says, speaking of them nationally, but as to everyone's personal concerns in a future state, he assures them, both Jews and Gentiles, that the unrighteous of both nations, whether admitted, or not, into the visible communion of the people of God, are liable to condemnation. Those, who have sinned without law, shall perish without law, and those, who have sinned in the law, shall be judged. 1. E. Condemned by the law. Perhaps some readers will not think it superfluous, if I give a short draft of St. Paul's management of himself here for allaying the sourness of the Jews against the Gentiles, and their offense at the gospel, for allowing any of them place among the people of God, under the Messias. After he had declared that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, to those who believe, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile, and that the way of this salvation is revealed to be, by the righteousness of God, which is by faith, he tells them, that the wrath of God is also now revealed against all atheism, polytheism, idolatry, and vice whatsoever, of men holding the truth in unrighteousness, because they might come to the knowledge of the true God, by the visible works of the creation, so that the Gentiles were without excuse, for turning from the true God to idolatry, and the worship of false gods, whereby their hearts were darkened, so that they were without God in the world. Wherefore, God gave them up to vile affections, and all manner of vices, in which state, though, by the light of nature, they know what was right, yet understanding not that such things were worthy of death, they not only do them themselves, but abstaining from censure, live fairly and in fellowship with those that do them. Whereupon he tells the Jews, that they are more inexcusable than the heathen, in that they judge, abhor, and have in aversion, the Gentiles, for what they themselves do with greater provocation. Their censure and judgment in the case is unjust and wrong, but the judgment of God is always right and just, which will certainly overtake those who judge others, for the same things they do themselves, 
and do not consider, that God's forbearance to them ought to bring them to repentance. For God will render to everyone according to his deeds, to those that in meekness and patience continue in well-doing, everlasting life, but to those who are censorious, proud and contentious, and will not obey the gospel, condemnation and wrath, at the day of judgment, whether they be Jews or Gentiles, for God puts no difference between them. Thou, that art a Jew, boastest that God is thy God, that he has enlightened thee by the law that he himself gave thee from heaven, and hath, by that immediate revelation, taught thee what things are excellent and tend to life, and what are evil and have death annexed to them. If, therefore, thou transgressest, dost not thou more dishonour God and provoke him, than a poor heathen, that knows not God, nor that the things he doth, deserve death, which is their reward. Shall not he, if, by the light of nature, he do what is conormable to the revealed law of God, judge thee, who hast received that law from God, by revelation, and breakest it? Shall not this, rather than circumcision, make him an Israelite, for he is not a Jew, one, e, one of God's people, who is one outwardly, by circumcision of the flesh, but he that is one inwardly, by the circumcision of the flesh, but he that is one inwardly, by the circumcision of the heart. Text, 16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation, to every one that believeth, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. 17 For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. 18 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven, against all ungodliness, and unrighteousness of men, who hold the truth in unrighteousness. 19 Because that, which may be known of God, is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. 20 For the invisible things of him, from the creation of the world, are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. 21 Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. 22 Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, 23 and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image, made like to corruptible man, and to birds, and four-footed beasts, and creeping things, 24 wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness, through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, 25 who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed for ever. Amen. 26 For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 27 And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. 28 And, even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind, to do those things which are not convenient. 29 Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. 30 Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. 31 Without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. 32 Who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but of pleasure in them that do. Them. 2. 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, 
for thou, that judgest, dost the same thing too but we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth, against them which commit such things. 3 And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such things, and dost the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? For or despisest thou the riches of his goodness, and forbearance, and long-suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? 5 But, after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath, against the day of wrath, and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. 6 Who will render to every man according to his deeds. 7 To them who by patient continuance in well-doing, seek for glory, and honour, and immortality, eternal life. 8 But unto them that are contentious, and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath. 9 Tribulation and anguish, upon every soul of man that doth evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. 10 But glory, honour, and peace, to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. 11 For there is no respect of persons with God. 12 For, as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law, shall be judged by the law. 13 For not the hearers of the law are just before God but the doers of the law shall be justified. 14 For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. 15 Which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts, the meanwhile, accusing, or else excusing one another. 16 In a day when God shall judge the secrets of men, by Jesus Christ, according to my gospel. 17 Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God. 18 And knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. 19 And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, 20 An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which hast the form of knowledge, and of the truth in the law. 21 Thou, therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? 22 Thou, that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou, that abhorrest idols, Dost thou commit sacrilege? 23 Thou, that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? 24 For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles, through you, as it is written. 25 For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keep the law, but if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. 26 Therefore, if the uncircumcision keep the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? 27 And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost transgress the law? 28 For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. 29 But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men, but of God. Paraphrase, 16 For I am not ashamed to preach the gospel of Christ, even at Rome itself, that mistress of the world, for, whatever it may be thought of there, by that vain and haughty people, it is that, wherein God exerts himself, and shows his power, for the salvation of those who believe, of the Jews in the seventeen first place, and also of the Gentiles. For therein is the righteousness, which is of the free grace of God, through Jesus Christ, revealed to be holy by faith, as it is written, 
the just shall live by eighteen faith, and it is no more than need, that the gospel, wherein the righteousness of God, by faith in Jesus Christ, is revealed, should be preached to you Gentiles, since the wrath of God is now revealed from heaven, by Jesus Christ, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who live not nineteen up to the light that God has given them, because God, in a clear manifestation of himself amongst them, has laid before them, ever since the creation of the world, his divine nature and eternal twenty power, so that what is to be known, of his invisible being, might be clearly discovered and understood, from the visible beauty, order, and operations, observable in the constitution and parts of the universe, by all those, that would cast their regards, and apply their minds that way, insomuch that twenty-one they are utterly without excuse, for that, when the deity was so plainly discovered to them, yet they glorified him not, as was suitable to the excellency of his divine nature, nor did they, with due thankfulness, acknowledge him as the author of their being, and the giver of all the good they enjoyed, but, following the vain fancies of their own vain minds, set up to themselves fictitious snow gods, and twenty-two their foolish understandings were darkened, assuming to themselves the opinion and name of twenty-three being wise, they became fools, and, quitting the incomprehensible majesty and glory of the eternal, incorruptible deity, set up to themselves the images of corruptible men, birds, beasts, and insects, as fit twenty-four objects of their adoration and worship, wherefore, they having forsaken God, he also left them to the lusts of their own hearts, and that uncleanness their darkened hearts led them into, to dishonour twenty-five their bodies among themselves, who so much debased themselves, as to change the true God, who made them, for a lie of their own making, worshipping and serving the creature and things even of a lower rank than themselves, more than the Creator, who is God over all, blessed for evermore. Amen. 26. For this cause God gave them up to shameful and infamous lusts and passions, for even their women did change their natural use, into that which is twenty-seven against nature, and likewise, their men, leaving also the natural use of the women, burned in their lusts one towards another, men with men practicing that which is shameful, and receiving in themselves a fit reward of their error, 1. e. idolatry, 28 and, as they did not search out God, whom they had in the world, so as to have him with a due acknowledgement of him, God gave them up to an unsearching and unjudicious mind, to do things 29 and congruous, and not meet to be done being filled with all manner of iniquity, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malice, full of envy, contention, comma, thirty deceit, malignity even to murder, backbiters, haters of God, insulters of men, proud, boasters, inventors of new arts of debauchery, disobedient to parents, thirty-one without understanding, covenant breakers, without thirty-two natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, though they acknowledge the rule of right prescribed them by God, and discovered by the light of nature, did not yet understand that those, who did such things, were worthy of death, do not only do them themselves, but live well together, without any mark of disesteem, or censure, with them that do them. Two. One therefore, thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art, that judgest or censurest another, for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou, that judgest, art alike guilty, in doing two the same things. But this we are sure of, that the judgment, that God passes upon any offenders, is according three to truth, right and just. Canst thou? who dost those things which thou condemnest in another, think that thou shalt escape the condemning sentence for of God, or slightest thou the riches of his goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering, 
not knowing, nor considering, that the goodness of God ought to lead thee five to repentance, but layest up to thyself wrath and punishment, which thou wilt meet with, at the day of judgment, and that just retribution, which shall be awarded thee by God, in proportion to thy impenitency, comma six, and the hardness of thy heart, who will retribute to every one according to his works, viz. seven eternal life to all those who by patience and gentleness in well doing seek glory and honor, and a eight state of immortality, but to them who are contentious and forward, and will not obey the truth, but subject themselves to unrighteousness, semicolon nine indignation and wrath tribulation and anguish shall be poured out upon every soul of man that worketh evil, of the Jew first, and also of the Gentile. Ten but glory, honour, and peace, shall be bestowed on every man, that worketh good, on the Jew first, eleven and also on the Gentile. For with God there is no twelve respect of persons. For all, that have sinned without having the positive law of God, which was given the Israelites, shall perish without the law, and all, who have sinned, being under the law, shall be thirteen judged by the law, for the bare hearers of the law are not thereby just, or righteous, in the sight of God, but the doers of the law, they, who exactly perform fourteen all that is commanded in it, shall be justified, for, when the Gentiles, who have no positive law given them by God, do, by the direction of the light of nature, observe, or keep to the moral rectitude, contained in the positive law, given by God to the Israelites, they being without any positive law given them, have nevertheless a law within themselves. Fifteen and show the rule of the law written in their hearts, their consciences also bearing witness to that law, they amongst themselves, in the reasoning of their own minds, accusing, or excusing one sixteen another, at the day of judgment, when, as I make known in my preaching the gospel, God shall seventeen judge all the actions of men, by Jesus Christ, behold, thou art named a Jew, and thou, with satisfaction, restest in the privilege of having the law, as a mark of God's peculiar favour, whom thou gloriest in, as being thy God, and thou one of his people, a people, who alone know and worship the eighteen true God, and thou knowest his will, and hast the touchstone of things excellent, having been educated nineteen in the law, and takest upon thee as one, who art a guide to the blind, a light to the ignorant twenty Gentiles, who are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, having an exact draught and a complete system of knowledge and twenty-one truth in the law. Thou, therefore, who art a master in this knowledge, and teachest others, teachest thou not thyself, thou, that preachest that a man should twenty-two not steal, dost thou steal, thou, that declarest adultery to be unlawful, dost thou commit it, thou, that abhorrest idols, Dost thou commit sacrilege? Question mark 23 Thou, who gloriest in the law, dost thou, by breaking of the law, dishonor God? For the name of God is blasphemed amongst the Gentiles, by reason 25 of your miscarriages, as it is written, circumcision indeed, and thy being a Jew, profiteth, if thou keep the law, but, if thou be a transgressor of the law, Thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Semicolon 26 Thou art no way better than in heathen. If, therefore, an uncircumcised Gentile keep the moral rectitudes of the law, shall he not be reckoned and accounted of, as if he were circumcised, and every twenty seven way a Jew? And shall not a Gentile, who, in his natural state of uncircumcision, fulfills the law, condemn thee, who, notwithstanding the advantage of having the law and circumcision, are to transgressor twenty-eight of the law. For he is not a Jew, who is one in outward appearance and conformity, nor is that the circumcision, which renders a man acceptable to twenty-nine God, which is outwardly in the flesh. But he is a Jew, and one of the people of God, 
who is one in an inward conformity to the law, and that is the circumcision which avails a man, which is of the heart, according to the spiritual sense of the law, which is the purging our hearts from iniquity, by faith in Jesus Christ, and not in an external observance of the letter, by which a man cannot attain life, such true Israelites as these, though they are judged, condemned, and rejected by men of the Jewish nation, are nevertheless honored and accepted by God. Sect Chapter 3 1. 31 Contents In this third chapter, St. Paul goes on to show, that the national privileges the Jews had over the Gentiles, in being the people of God, gave them no peculiar right, or better title to the kingdom of the Messias, than what the Gentiles had, because they, as well as the Gentiles, all sinned, and, not being able to attain righteousness by the deeds of the law, more than the Gentiles, justification was to be had, only by the free grace of God, through faith in Jesus Christ, so that, upon their believing, God, who is the God not of the Jews alone, but also of the Gentiles, accepted the Gentiles, as well as the Jews, and now admits all, who profess faith in Jesus Christ, to be equally his people. To clear his way to this, he begins, with removing an objection of the Jews, ready to say, if it be so, as ye have told us in the foregoing section, that it is the circumcision of the heart alone that availeth, what advantage have the Jews, who keep to the circumcision of the flesh, and the other observances of the law, by being the people of God? To which he answers, that the Jews had many advantages above the Gentiles, but yet that, in respect of their acceptance with God under the gospel, they had none at all. He declares that both Jews and Gentiles are sinners, both equally incapable of being justified by their own performances, that God was equally the God, both of Jews and Gentiles, and out of his free grace justified those, and only those, who believed, whether Jews, or Gentiles. Text. 1 What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Too much every way chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. 3 For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? For God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, for thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. 5 But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unrighteous, who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man, 6 God forbid. For then, how shall God judge the world? 7 For, if the truth of God hath more abounded, through my lie, unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? 8 And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil, that good may come? Whose damnation is just? 9 What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and Gentiles, that they are all under sin. 10 As it is written, there is none righteous, no not one. 11 There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. 12 They are all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable, there is none that doeth good, no not one. 13 Their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they have used deceit, the poison of asps is under their lips. 14 Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. 15 Their feet are swift to shed blood. 16 Destruction and misery are in their ways. 17 And the way of peace have they not known? 18 There is no fear of God before their eyes. 19 Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. 20 Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, 
for by the law is the knowledge of sin. 21 But now the righteousness of God, without the law, is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. 22 Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. 23 For all have sinned, and come short of the glory of God. 24 Being justified freely by his grace, through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. 25 Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation, through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, at this time his righteousness, that he might be just, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. 27 Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. 28 Therefore we conclude, that a man is justified by faith, without the deeds of the law. 29 Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. 30 Seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. 31 Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea we establish the law. Paraphrase 1 If it be thus, that circumcision, by a failure of obedience to the law, becomes uncircumcision, and that the Gentiles, who keep the righteousness, or moral part of the law, shall judge the Jews, that transgress the law, what advantage have the Jews? or what to profit is there of circumcision? I answer, much every way, chiefly, that God, particularly present amongst them, revealed his mind and will, and engaged himself in promises to them, by Moses and other his prophets, which oracles they had, and kept amongst them, whilst the rest of mankind had no such communication with the deity had no revelation of his purposes of mercy to mankind, but were three as it were, without God in the world, for, though some of the Jews, who had the promises of the Messias, did not believe in him, when he came, and so did not receive the righteousness, which is by faith in Jesus Christ, yet their unbelief cannot render the faithfulness and truth of God of, no effect who had promised to be a God to Abraham and his seed after for him, and bless them to all generations. No, by no means. God forbid that anyone should entertain such a thought, yea, let God be acknowledged to be true, and every man a liar, as it is written, for thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, comma five and mightest overcome when thou art judged. But you will say, Father, if it be so that our sinfulness commendeth the righteousness of God, shown in keeping his word given to our forefathers, what shall I say, is it not injustice in God to punish us for it, and cast us off, I must be understood to say this, in the person of a carnal man, pleading for himself six God forbid, for if God be unrighteous, how seven shall he judge the world, for, if the truth and veracity of God hath the more appeared to his glory, by reason of my lie, one, e, my sin, why yet am I condemned eight for a sinner, and punished for it, why rather should not this be thought a right consequence, and a just excuse, let us do evil that good may come of it, that glory may come to God by it. This some maliciously and slanderously report as Christians to say, for which they deserve, and will from God receive, punishment, as they deserve. Nine are we Jews, then, in any whit a better condition than the Gentiles? Not at all, for I have already brought a charge of guilt and sin, both against Jews and Gentiles, and urged that there is not one of them clear, which I shall prove now against you ten Jews, for it is written, There is none righteous, no eleven not one, there is none that understandeth, the twelve is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable, there is none that doth good, no, 
not 1.13 their throat is an open sepulchre, with their tongues they have used deceit, the poison of asps 14 is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing 15 and bitterness, their feet are swift to shed blood colon 16 17 destruction and misery are in their ways and the eighteen way of peace have they not known, there is no nineteen fear of God before their eyes, this is all said in the sacred book of our law, and what is said there, we know is said to the Jews, who are under the law, that the mouth of every Jew, that would justify himself, might be stopped, and all the world, Jews as well as Gentiles, may be forced to acknowledge twenty themselves guilty before God from whence it is evident, that by his own performances, in obedience to law, no man can attain to an exact conformity to the rule of right, so as to be righteous in the sight of God, for by law, which is the publishing the rule with a penalty, we are not delivered from the power of sin, nor can it help men to righteousness, but by law we come experimentally to no sin, in the force and power of it, since we find it prevail upon us notwithstanding the punishment of twenty-one death is, by the law, annexed to it, but the righteousness of God, that righteousness which he intended, and will accept, and is a righteousness not within the rule and rigor of law, is now made manifest, and confirmed by the testimony of the law and the prophets, which, bear witness of this truth, that Jesus is the Messias, and that it is according twenty-two to his purpose and promise, that the righteousness of God, by faith in Jesus the Messias, is extended to, and bestowed on all who believe in him, 23, for there is no difference between them. They have all, both Jews and Gentiles, sinned, and fail of attaining that glory which God hath appointed 24 for the righteous, being made righteous gratis by the favour of God, through the redemption 25 which is by Jesus Christ, whom God hath set forth to be the propitiatory, or mercy seat in his own blood, for the manifestation of his, God's, righteousness, by passing over their transgressions, formerly committed, which he hath borne with hitherto, so as to withhold his hand from casting off the nation of the Jews as their past sins deserved. 26 For the manifesting of his righteousness at this time, that he might be just, in keeping his promise, and be the justifier of every one, not who is of the Jewish nation, or extraction, but of the faith. 27 In Jesus Christ. What reason, then, have you Jews to glory, and set yourselves so much above the Gentiles, in judging them? as you do, none at all, boasting is totally excluded, by what law, by the twenty-eight law of works, no, but by the law of faith, I conclude therefore, that a man is justified by faith, comma twenty-nine and not by the works of the law, is God the God of the Jews only, and not of the Gentiles also, question mark thirty, yea, certainly of the Gentiles also, since the time is come that God is no longer one to the Jews, and another to the Gentiles, but he is now become one and the same God to them all, and will justify the Jews by faith, and the Gentiles also through faith, who, by the law of Moses, were heretofore shut out thirty-one from being the people of God, do we then make the law insignificant, or useless, by our doctrine of faith, by no means, but, on the contrary, we establish and confirm the law. Sect. 4. Chapter 4. 1. 25. Contents. St. Paul having, in the foregoing section, cut off all glorying from the Jews upon the account of their having the law, and shown, that that gave them no manner of title or pretense to be the people of God, more than the Gentiles under the Messias, and so they had no reason to judge, or exclude the Gentiles, as they did, he comes here to prove that their lineal extraction from their father Abraham gave them no better a pretense of glorying, or of setting themselves upon that account above the Gentiles, now, in the time of the Gospel, because Abraham himself was justified by faith, and so had not whereof to glory, 
for as much as he that receiveth righteousness, as a boon, has no reason to glory, but he that attains it by works, because neither they, who had circumcision derived down to them, as the posterity of Abraham, nor they who had the law, but they only, who had faith, were the seed of Abraham, to whom the promise was made, and therefore the blessing of justification was intended for the Gentiles, and bestowed on them as well as on the Jews, and upon the same ground. Text. 1 What shall we say then, that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? 2 For, if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. 3 For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. For now to him that worketh, is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. 5 But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him, that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. 6 Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man, unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. 7 Saying, Blessed are they, whose iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. 8 Blessed is the man, to whom the Lord will not impute sin. 9 Cometh this blessedness, then, upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say, that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. 10 How was it, then, reckoned? When he was in circumcision, or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. 11 And he received a sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness of the faith, which he had, being yet uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. 12 And the father of circumcision to them, who are not of the circumcision only, but also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had been yet uncircumcised. 13 For the promise that he should be the heir of the world, was not to Abraham, or to his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. 14 For if they, which are of the law, be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. 15 Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. 16 Therefore it is of faith, that it might be by grace, to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only, which is of the law, but to that also, which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. 17 As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things, which be not, as though they were. 18 Who, against hope, believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be. 19 And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. 20 He staggered not at the promise of God, through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. 21 And being fully persuaded, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. 22 And, therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. 23 Now it was not written for his sake alone, that it was imputed to him. 24 But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. 25 Who was delivered for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. Paraphrase. 1 What then shall we say of Abraham our father, according to the flesh, what has he obtained? Has too not he found matter of glorying? Yes, if he were justified by works, he had matter of glorying, he might then have gloried over the rest of the Gentile world, in having God for his God, and he and his family being God's people, but he had no subject of three glorying before God, as it is evident from sacred scripture, which telleth us, that Abraham believed God, 
and it was counted to him for righteousness. For now there had been no need of any such counting, any such allowance, if he had attained righteousness by works of obedience, exactly conformable, and coming up, to the rule of righteousness. For what reward a man has made himself a title to, by the performances, that he receives as a debt that is due, five and not as a gift of favor, but to him, that by his works attains not righteousness, but only believeth on God, who justifieth him, being ungodly, to him justification is a favor of grace, because his believing is, accounted to him for righteousness, or six perfect obedience. Even as David speaks of the blessedness of the man to whom God reckoneth seven righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins eight are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the nine Lord will not reckon sin. Is this blessedness then upon the circumcised only, or upon the uncircumcised also? For we say that faith was reckoned to ten Abraham for righteousness. When, therefore, was it reckoned to him? When he was in circumcision, or in uncircumcision? not in circumcision, comma 11 but in uncircumcision, for he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had, being yet uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all those who believed, being uncircumcised, that righteousness might be twelve reckoned to them also, and the father of the circumcised, that righteousness might be reckoned, not to those who were barely of the circumcision, but to such of the circumcision as did also walk in the steps of the faith of our father Abraham, 13 which he had, being uncircumcised, for the promise, that he should be possessor of the world, was not that Abraham, and those of his seed, who were under the law, should, by virtue of their having and owning the law, be possessed of it, but by the righteousness of faith, whereby those who were, without the law, scattered all over the world, beyond the borders of Canaan, became his posterity, and had him for their father, and inherited the fourteen blessing of justification by faith, for, if they only who had the law of Moses given them, were heirs of Abraham, faith is made void and useless, it receiving no benefit of the promise, which was made to the heirs of Abraham's faith and so the promise fifteen becomes of no effect, because the law procures them not justification, but renders them liable to the wrath and punishment of God, who, by the law, has made known to them what is sin, and what punishment he has annexed to it, for there is no incurring wrath, or punishment, where there is no sixteen law that says anything of it, therefore the inheritance is of faith, that it might be merely of favor, to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed of Abraham, not to that part of it only, which has faith, being under the law, but to that part also, who without the law, inherit the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all who believe, 17 whether Jews or Gentiles, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, I say the father of us all, in the account of God, whom he believed, and who accordingly quickened the dead, 1. e. Abraham and Sarah, whose bodies were dead, and called things that are not, as if they were, 18. who without any hope, which the natural course of things could afford, did in hope believe, that he should become the father of many nations, according to what God had spoken, by God's showing him the stars of heaven, saying, so shall thy seed be. 19 And being firm and unshaken in his faith, he regarded not his own body, now dead. He being about an hundred years old, nor the deadness of Sarah apostrophe s twenty womb, he staggered not at the promise of God, through unbelief, but was strong in faith, thereby twenty one giving glory to God, by the full persuasion he had that God was able to perform what he had promised colon 22 and therefore it was accounted to him for 23 righteousness. Now this, of its being reckoned to 20 for him, was not written for his sake alone, but for ours also, to whom faith also will be reckoned for righteousness, viz. 
to as many as believe in him, who 25 raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered to death for our offenses, and was raised again for our justification. Sect. 5. Chapter 5. 1. 11 Contents. St. Paul, in the foregoing chapters, has examined the glorying of the Jews, and their valuing themselves so highly above the Gentiles, and shown the vanity of their boasting in circumcision and the law, since neither they, nor their father Abraham, were justified, or found acceptance with God, by circumcision, or the deeds of the law, and therefore they had no reason so as they did to press circumcision and the law on the Gentiles, or exclude those who had them not, from being the people of God, and unfit for their communion, in and under the gospel. In this section, he comes to show what the convert Gentiles, by faith, without circumcision, or the law, had to glory in, viz. the hope of glory, verse 2, their sufferings for the gospel, verse 3, and God, as their God, verse 11, in these three it is easy to observe the thread and coherence of St. Paul's discourse here, the intermediate verses, according to that abounding with matter and overflowing of thought, he was filled with, being taken up with an accidental train of considerations, to show the reason they had to glory in tribulations. Text 1 Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 By whom also we have access, by faith, into this grace, wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. 3 And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, for and patience, experience, and experience, hope. 5 And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. 6 For, when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. 7 For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. 8 But God commendeth his love towards us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 9 Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. 10 For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. 11 And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Paraphrase 1 Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace too with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have had admittance, through faith, into that favor, in which we have stood and glory in the hope three of the glory, which God has in store for us, and not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing for that tribulation worketh patience, and patience giveth us a proof of ourselves, which furnishes us with five hope, and our hope maketh not ashamed, will not deceive us, because the sense of the love of God is poured out into our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is six given on to us, a, 4, when the Gentiles were yet without strength, b, void of all help, or ability to deliver ourselves, Christ, in the time that God had appointed and foretold, died for us, who lived without the acknowledgement and worship of the seven true God, b, scarce is it to be found that any one will die for a just man, if peradventure one should a dare to die for a good man, but God recommends, and herein shows the greatness of his love towards us, in that, whilst we Gentiles were a mass of nine profligate sinners, Christ died for us. Much more, therefore, now being justified by his death, shall we through him be delivered from condemnation ten at the day of judgment. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, shall we be eleven saved by his life. And not only do we glory in tribulation, 
but also in God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom now we have received reconciliation. Sect. 6. Chapter 5. 12. 7. 25. Contents. The Apostle here goes on with his design, of showing that the Gentiles, under the Gospel, have as good a title to the favor of God, as the Jews, there being no other way for either Jew or Gentile, to find acceptance with God, but by faith in Jesus Christ. In the foregoing section he reckoned up several subjects of glorying, which the convert Gentiles had without the law, and concludes them with this chief and principal matter of glorying, even God himself, whom, now that they were, by Jesus Christ their Lord, reconciled to him, they could glory in as their God. To give them a more full and satisfactory comprehension of this, he leads them back to the times before the giving of the law, and the very being of the Jewish nation, and lays before them, in short, the whole scene of God's economy, and his dealing with mankind, from the beginning, in reference to life and death. He teaches them, that by Adam's lapse all men were brought into a state of death, and by Christ's death all are restored to life. By Christ also, as many as believe are instated in eternal life, that the law, when it came, laid the Israelites faster under death, by enlarging the offense, which had death annexed to it. For, by the law, every transgression that any one under the law committed, had death for its punishment notwithstanding which, by Christ, those under the law, who believe, receive life, that, though the Gentiles, who believe, come not under the rigor of the law, yet the covenant of grace, which they are under, requires that they should not be servants and vassals to sin, to obey it in the lusts of it, but sincerely endeavor after righteousness, the end whereof would be everlasting life, that the Jews also, who received the gospel, are delivered from the law, not that the law is sin, but because, though the law forbid the obeying of sin, as well as the gospel, yet not enabling them to resist their sinful lusts, but making each compliance with any sinful lust deadly, it settles upon them the dominion of sin, by death, from which they are delivered by the grace of God alone, which frees them from the condemnation of the law for every actual transgression, and requires no more, but that they should, with the whole bent of their mind, serve the law of God, and not their carnal lusts. In all which cases the salvation of the Gentiles is wholly by grace, without their being at all under the law. And their salvation of the Jews is wholly by grace also, without any aid, or help from the law, from which also, by Christ they are delivered. Thus lies the thread of St. Paul's argument, wherein we may see how he pursues his design, of satisfying of Gentile converts at Rome, that they were not required to submit to the law of Moses, and of fortifying them against the Jews, who troubled them about it. For the more distinct and easy apprehension of St. Paul's discoursing on these four heads, I shall divide this section into the four following numbers, taking them up as they lie in the order of the text. Sect. 6. N. 1. Chapter 5. 12. 19. Contents. Here he instructs them in the state of mankind in general, before the law, and before the separation that was made thereby of the Israelites from all the other nations of the earth. And here he shows, that Adam, transgressing the law, which forbade him the eating of the tree of knowledge, upon pain of death, forfeited immortality, and becoming thereby mortal, all his posterity, descending from the loins of a mortal man, were mortal too, and all died, though none of them broke that law, but Adam himself, but, by Christ, they are all restored to life again, and, God justifying those who believe in Christ, they are restored to their primitive state of righteousness and immortality, so that the Gentiles, being the descendants of Adam, as well as the Jews, stand as fair for all the advantages, that accrue to the posterity of Adam, by Christ, as the Jews themselves, 
it being all wholly and solely from grace. Text 12 Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. 13 For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. 14 Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. 15 But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if, through the offense of one, many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is, by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. 16 And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one, to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses, unto justification. 17 For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace, and of the gift of righteousness, shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. 18 Therefore as, by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men, unto justification of life. 19 For, as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so, by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. Paraphrase 12 Wherefore, to give you a state of the whole matter, from the beginning you must know, that, as by the act of one man, Adam, the father of us all, sin entered into the world, and death, which was the punishment annexed to the offense of eating the forbidden fruit, entered by that sin, for that all thirteen Adam's posterity thereby became mortal. It is true, indeed, sin was universally committed in the world by all men, all the time before the positive law of God delivered by Moses, but it is as true that there is no certain, determined punishment of fixed fourteen to sin, without a positive law declaring it. Nevertheless, we see that, in all that space of time, which was before the positive law of God by Moses, men from the beginning of the world, died, all as well as their father Adam, though none of them, but he alone, had eaten of the forbidden fruit, and thereby, as he had committed that sin, to which sin alone the punishment of death was annexed, by the positive sanction of God, denounced to Adam, who was the figure and type of Christ, who was to fifteen come. But yet though he were the type of Christ, yet the gift, or benefit, received by Christ, is not exactly conformed and confined to the dimensions of the damage, received by Adam's fall. For if, by the lapse of one man, the multitude, one. E. All men died, much more did the favor of God, and the free gift by the bounty or goodwill which is in Jesus Christ, exceed to the multitude. 1. E. To all men. 16. Furthermore, neither is the gift, as was the lapse, by one sin, for the judgment or sentence was for one offense, to condemnation, but the gift of favor reaches, notwithstanding many sins, to seventeen justification of life. For if, by one lapse, death reigned, by reason of one offense, much more shall they who receiving the surplusage of favor, and of the gift of righteousness, reign in life by one, even it in Jesus Christ. Therefore as, by one offense, viz, Adam's eating the forbidden fruit, all men fell under the condemnation of death. So, by one act of righteousness, viz. Christ's obedience to death upon the nineteen cross, all men are restored to life. For as, by one man's disobedience, many were brought into a state of mortality, which is the state of sinners, so, by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous, one. e. be restored to life again, as if they were not sinners. Sect. 6 n. 2. Chapter 5. 20. 21. Contents. St. Paul, pursuing his design in this epistle, 
of satisfying the Gentiles, that there was no need of their submitting to the law, in order to their partaking of the benefits of the gospel, having, in the foregoing eight verses taught them, that Adam's one sin had brought death upon them all, from which they were all restored by Christ's death, with addition of eternal bliss and glory, to all those who believe in him, all which being the effect of God's free grace and favor, to those who were never under the law, excludes the law from having any part in it, and so fully makes out the title of the Gentiles to God's favor, through Jesus Christ, under the gospel, without the intervention of the law. Here, for the Father's satisfaction of the Gentile converts, he shows them, in these two verses, that the nation of the Hebrews, who had the law, were not delivered from the state of death by it, but rather plunged deeper under it, by the law, and so stood more in need of favor, and indeed had a greater abundance of grace afforded them, for their recovery to life by Jesus Christ, than the Gentiles themselves. Thus the Jews themselves, not being saved by the law, but by an excess of grace, this is a farther proof of the point St. Paul was upon, viz. That the Gentiles had no need of the law, for the obtaining of life, under the gospel. Text. 20 Moreover, the law entered, that the offense might abound, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. 21 That, as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life, by Jesus Christ, our Lord. Paraphrase. 20 This was the state of all mankind, before the law, they all died for the one comma lapse, or offense, of one man which was the only irregularity, that had death annexed to it, but the law entered, and took place over a small part of mankind, that this comma lapse, or offense, to which death was annexed, might abound, 1. e. The multiplied transgressions of many men, viz. all that were under the law of Moses, might have death annexed to them, by the positive sanction of that law, whereby the offence, to which death was annexed, did abound, 1. e. sins that had death for their punishment, were increased, but, by the goodness of God, where sin, with death annexed to it, did abound, grace 21 did much more abound, that as sin had reigned, or showed its mastery, in the death of the Israelites, who were under the law, so grace, in its turn, might train, or show its mastery, by justifying them, from all those many sins, which they had committed, each whereof, by the law, brought death with it, and so bestowing on them the righteousness of faith, and state them in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sect 6 n. 3. Chapter 6. 1. 23. Contents. St. Paul having, in the foregoing chapter, very much magnified free grace, by showing that all men, having lost their lives by Adam's sin, were, by grace, through Christ, restored to life again, and also, as many of them as believed in Christ, were re-established in immortality by grace, and that even the Jews, who, by their own trespasses against the law, had forfeited their lives, over and over again, were also, by grace, restored to life, grace superabounding, where sin abounded, he here obviates a wrong inference, which might be apt to mislead the convert Gentiles, viz. Therefore, let us continue in sin, that grace may abound the contrary whereof he shows their very taking upon them the profession of Christianity required of them, by the very initiating ceremony of baptism, wherein they were typically buried with Christ, to teach them that they, as he did, ought to die to sin, and, as he rose to live to God, they should rise to a new life of obedience to God, and be no more slaves to sin in an obedience and resignation of themselves to its commands, for, if their obedience were to sin, they were vassals of sin, and would certainly receive the wages of that master, 
which was nothing but death, but, if they obeyed righteousness, one. e. sincerely endeavoured after righteousness, though they did not attain it, sin should not have dominion over them, by death, one. e. should not bring death upon them, because they were not under the law, which condemned them to death for every transgression, but under grace, which, by faith in Jesus Christ, justified them to eternal life, from their many transgressions, and thus he shows the Gentiles not only the no necessity, but the advantage of their not being under the law. Text. 1 What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may abound? 2 God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin, live any longer therein? 3 Know ye not? that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death, for therefore we are buried with him by baptism, into death, that, like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. 5 For, if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. 6 Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. 7 For he that is dead, is freed from sin. 8 Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. 9 Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. 10 For in that he died, he died unto sin once but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. 11 Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 12 Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it, in the lusts thereof. 13 Neither yield ye your members, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members, as instruments of righteousness, unto God. 14 For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. 15 What then? Shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. 16 Know ye not, that, to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. 17 But God be thanked, that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine, which was delivered you. 18 Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. 19 I speak after the manner of men, because of the infirmity of your flesh for as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness, and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness, unto holiness. 24 When ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. 21 What fruit had ye then, in those things, whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. 22 But now being made free from sin, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. 23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paraphrase. 1 What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, comma, to that grace may abound? God forbid, how can it be that we, who, by our embracing Christianity, have renounced our former sinful courses, and have professed to death to sin, should live any longer in it. 3 For this I hope you are not ignorant of, that we Christians, who by baptism were admitted into the kingdom and church of Christ, were baptized into a forsimilitude of his death, we did own some kind of death, by being buried under water, which, being buried with him, one e. in conformity to his burial, as a confession of our being dead, was to signify, that as Christ was raised up from the dead, into a glorious life with his Father, even so we, b. 
being raised from our typical death and burial in baptism, should lead a new sort of life, wholly different from our former, in some approaches towards that heavenly life that five Christ is risen to. For, if we have been engrafted into him, in the similitude of his death, we shall be also in a conformity to the life, which he is entered six into, by his resurrection, knowing this, that we are to live so, as if our old man, our wicked and corrupt fleshly self which we were before, were crucified with him, that the prevalency of our carnal sinful propensities, which are from our bodies, might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, seven as vassals to it, for he, that is dead, is set free from the vassalage of sin, as a slave is from the vassalage eight of his master. Now, if we understand by our being buried in baptism, that we died with Christ, we cannot but think and believe, that nine we should live a life conformable to his, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, returns no more to a mortal life, death hath no more dominion ten over him, he is no more subject to death for in that he died, he died unto sin, 1. e. upon the account of sin, once for all, but his life, now after his resurrection, is a life wholly appropriated to God, with which sin, or death, shall never have any more to do, or come in reach of dot 11 in like manner, do you also make your reckoning, account yourselves dead to sin, freed from that master, so as not to suffer yourselves, any more, to be commanded, or employed by it, as if it were still your master, but alive to God, 1. e. that it is your business now to live wholly for his service, and to twelve his glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Permit not, therefore, sin to reign over you, by your mortal bodies, which you will do, if you obey thirteen your carnal lusts, neither deliver up your members to sin, to be employed by sin, as instruments of iniquity, but deliver up yourselves unto God, as those who have got to a new life from among the dead, and choosing him for your Lord and Master, yield your members to him, as instruments of fourteen righteousness. For if you do so, sin shall not have dominion over you, you shall not be as its slaves, in its power, to be by it delivered over to death for you are not under the law, in the legal state, but you are under grace, in the gospel state of the fifteen covenant of grace. What then, shall we sin, because we are not under the law, but under the covenant sixteen of grace? God forbid. Know ye not that, to whom you subject yourselves as vassals, to be at his beck, his vassals you are whom you thus obey, whether it be of sin, which vassalage ends in death or of Christ, in obeying the gospel, to the obtaining of seventeen righteousness and life. But God be thanked, that you who were the vassals of sin, have sincerely, and from your heart, obeyed, so as to receive the form, or be cast into the mould of that doctrine, under whose direction or regulation you were put, that eighteen you might conform yourselves to it. Being therefore set free from the vassalage of sin, you became nineteen the servants or vassals of righteousness. I make use of this metaphor, of the passing of slaves from one master to another, well known to you Romans, the better to let my meaning into your understandings, that are yet weak in these matters, being more accustomed to fleshly than spiritual things, for as you yielded your natural faculties obedient, slavish instruments to uncleanness, to be wholly employed in all manner of iniquity, so now ye ought to yield up your natural faculties to a perfect twenty and ready obedience to righteousness. For, when ye were the vassals of sin, you were not at all subject to, nor paid any obedience to righteousness, therefore, by a parity of reason, now righteousness is your master, you ought to pay no obedience to twenty-one sin. What fruit, or benefit? had you then in those things, in that course of things, whereof you are now ashamed, for the end of those things, which twenty-two are done in obedience to sin, is death, but now, being set free from sin, 
being no longer vassals to that master, but having God now for your Lord and Master, to whom you are become subjects or vassals, your course of life tends to holiness, and will end in twenty-three everlasting life. For the wages that sin pays, is death, but that which God's servants receive, from his bounty, is the gift of eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Sect. 6. N. 4. Chapter 7. 1. 25. Contents. St. Paul, in the foregoing chapter, addressing himself to the convert Gentiles, shows them, that, not being under the law, they were obliged only to keep themselves free from the vassalage of sin, by a sincere endeavor after righteousness, for as much as God gave eternal life to all those who, being under grace, 1. e. being converted to Christianity, did so, in this chapter, addressing himself to those of his own nation in the Roman church, he tells them, that, the death of Christ having put an end to the obligation of the law, they were at their liberty to quit the observances of the law, and were guilty of no disloyalty, in putting themselves under the gospel. And here St. Paul shows the deficiency of the law, which rendered it necessary to be laid aside, by the coming and reception of the gospel. Not that it allowed any sin, but, on the contrary, forbade even concupiscence which was not known to be sin, without the law. Nor was it the law that brought death upon those who were under it, but sin, that herein it might show the extreme malignant influence it had, upon our weak fleshly natures, in that it could prevail on us to transgress the law, which we could not but acknowledge to be holy, just and good, though death was the declared penalty of every transgression but herein lay the deficiency of the law, as spiritual and opposite to sin as it was, that it could not master and root it out, but sin remained and dwelt in men, as before, and by the strength of their carnal appetites, which were not subdued by the law, carried them to transgressions, that they approved not, nor did it avail them to disapprove, or struggle, since, though the bent of their minds were the other way, yet their endeavours after obedience delivered them not from that death, which their bodies, or carnal appetites, running them into transgressions, brought upon them. That deliverance was to be had from grace, by which those who, putting themselves from under the law into the gospel state, were accepted, if with the bent of their minds they sincerely endeavoured to serve and obey the law of God, though sometimes, through the frailty of their flesh, they fell into sin. This is a farther demonstration to the converted Gentiles of Rome, that they are under no obligation of submitting themselves to the law, in order to be the people of God, or partake of the advantages of the gospel, since it was necessary, even to the Jews themselves, to quit the terms of the law, that they might be delivered from death by the gospel, and thus we see how steadily and skillfully he pursues his design, and with what evidence and strength he fortifies the Gentile converts, against all attempts of the Jews, who went about to bring them under the observances of the law of Moses. Text 1 Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man, as long as he liveth, too for the woman which hath an husband, is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth, but if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. 3 So then, if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress, but, if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. For wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law, by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him, who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. 5 For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sins, which were by the law, did work in our members, to bring forth fruit unto death. 6 But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held that we should serve in newness of spirit, 
and not in the oldness of the letter. 7 What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. 8 But sin, taking occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence. For without the law sin was dead. 9 For I was alive without the law, once, but when the commandment came, sin revived, and I died. 10 And the commandment, which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. 11 For sin, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me, and by it slew me. 12 Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. 13 Was then that, which is good, made death unto me, God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me, by that which is good, that sin, by the commandment, might become exceeding sinful. 14 For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. 15 For that which I do, I allow not, for what I would, that do I not, but what I hate, that I do. 16 If then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law, that it is good. 17 Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. 18 For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing, for to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. 19 For the good, that I would, I do not, but the evil, which I would not, that I do. 20 Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I, that do it, but sin, that dwelleth in me. 21 I find then a law, that, when I would do good, evil is present with me. 22 For I delight in the law of God, after the inward man. 23 But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. 24 O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death. 25 I thank God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Paraphrase. 1 I have let those of you, who were formerly Gentiles, see, that they are not under the law, but under grace. I now apply myself to you, my brethren, of my own nation, who know the law. You cannot be ignorant that the authority of the law reaches, or concerns a to man, so long as he liveth, and no longer. For a woman who hath an husband, is bound by the law to her living husband, but if her husband dieth, she is loosed from the law, which made her her husband's, because the authority of the law whereby he had a right to her, ceased in respect of him, as soon as he died. Three, wherefore she shall be called an adulteress, if while her husband liveth, she become another man's. But if her husband dies, the right he had to her by the law ceasing, she is freed from the law, so that she is not an adulteress, though she become another man. Apostrophe S. Four, so that even ye, my brethren, by the body of Christ, are become dead to the law, whereby the dominion of the law over you has ceased, that you should subject yourselves to the dominion of Christ, in the gospel, which you may do with as much freedom from blame, or the imputation of disloyalty, as a woman whose husband is dead, may, without the imputation of adultery, marry another man, and this making yourselves, and others, even Christ's, who is risen from the dead, is, that we five should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were after so fleshly a manner, under the law, as not to comprehend the spiritual meaning of it, that directed us to Christ, the spiritual end of the law, our sinful lust, that remained in us under the law, or in the state under the law, wrought in our members. 1. E. Set our members and faculties on work, in six doing that whose end was death. But now the law, under which we were heretofore held in subjection, being dead, 
we are set free from the dominion of the law, that we should perform our obedience, as under the new and spiritual covenant of the gospel, wherein there is a remission of frailties, and not as still under the old rigor of the letter of the law, which condemns everyone, who does not perform exact obedience seven to every tittle. What shall we then think, that the law, because it is set aside, was unrighteous, or gave any allowance, or contributed anything to sin? By no means, for the law, on the contrary, tied men stricter up from sin, forbidding concupiscence, which they did not know to be sin, but by the law. For I had not known concupiscence to be sin, unless the law eight had said, Thou shalt not covet. Nevertheless sin, taking opportunity, during the law, or whilst I was under the commandment, wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law, sin is nine dead, not able to hurt me, and there was a time once, when I being without the law, was in a state of life, but the commandment coming, sin got life and strength again, and I found myself or dead man, ten and that very law, which was given me for the attaining of life was found to produce death to eleven me, for my mortal enemy, sin, taking the opportunity of my being under the law, slew me by the law, which it inveigled me to disobey, 1. e. the frailty and vicious inclinations of nature remaining in me under the law, as they were before, able still to bring me into transgressions, each whereof was mortal, sin had, by my being under the law, a short twelve opportunity of bringing death upon me, so that the law is holy, just, and good, such as the eternal, immutable rule of right and good required it to be. Thirteen was then the law, that in itself was good, made death to me, no, by no means, but it was sin, that by the law was made death unto me, to the end that the power of sin might appear, by its being able to bring death upon me, by that very law, that was intended for my good, that so, by the commandment, the power of sin and corruption in me might fourteen be shown to be exceeding great, for we know that the law is spiritual, requiring actions quite opposite to our carnal affections, but I am so carnal, as to be enslaved to them, and forced against my will to do the drudgery of sin, as if I were a slave that had been sold into the hands of that my domineering fifteen enemy, for what I do, is not of my own contrivance, for that which I have a mind to, I do not semicolon sixteen and what I have an aversion to, that I do, if then my transgressing the law be what I, in my mind, am against, it is plain, there, consent of my mind goes seventeen with the law that it is good, if so, then it is not I, a willing agent of my own free purpose, that do what is contrary to the law, but as a poor slave in captivity, not able to follow my own understanding and choice, forced by the prevalency of my own sinful affections, and sin that remains still in me notwithstanding eighteen the law, for I know, by woeful experience, that in me, viz. in my flesh, that part, which is the seat of carnal appetites, there inhabits no good, for, in the judgment and purpose of my mind, I am readily carried into a conformity and obedience to the law, but, the strength of my carnal affections not being abated by the law, I am not able to execute what I judge to be right, and nineteen intend to perform, for the good, that is my purpose and aim, that I do not, but the evil, that is contrary to my intention, that in my practice takes place, 1. e. I purpose and aim at universal obedience, 20 but cannot in fact attain it. Now if I do that, which is against the full bent and intention of me myself, it is, as I said before, not I, my true self, who do it, but the true author of it is my old enemy, sin, which still remains and dwells in me and I would fain get twenty-one rid of, I find it, therefore, as by a law settled in me, that when my intentions aim at good, evil is ready at twenty-two hand, 
to make my actions wrong and faulty. For that which my inward man is delighted with, that, which with satisfaction my mind would make its rule, is 23 the law of God. But I see in my members another principle of action, equivalent to a law, directly waging war against that law, which my mind would follow, leading me captive into an unwilling subjection to the constant inclination and impulse of my carnal appetite, which, as steadily as if it were a twenty-four law, carries me to sin. O miserable man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Question mark 25 The grace of God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to comfort myself, therefore, as that state requires, for my deliverance from death, I myself, with full purpose and sincere endeavors of mind, give up myself to obey the law of God, though my carnal inclinations are enslaved and have a constant tendency to sin. This is all I can do, and this is all, I being under grace, that is required of me, and through Christ will be accepted. Sect. 7. Chapter 8. 1. 39. Contents. St. Paul having, Chapter 6. Shown that the Gentiles, who were not under the law, were saved only by grace, which required that they should not indulge themselves in sin but steadily and sincerely endeavor after perfect obedience, having also, chapter 7, shown, that the Jews who were under the law, were also, saved by grace only, because the law could not enable them wholly to avoid sin, which, by the law, was in every the least slip made death, he in this chapter shows, that both Jews and it Gentiles, who are under grace, 1. E converts to Christianity, are free from condemnation, if they perform what is required of them, and thereupon he sets forth the terms of the covenant of grace, and presses their observance, viz. not to live after the flesh, but after the spirit, mortifying the deeds of the body, for as much as those, that do so, are their sons of God. This being laid down, he makes use of it to arm them with patience against afflictions, assuring them, that, whilst they remain in this state, nothing can separate them from the love of God, nor shut them out from the inheritance of eternal life with Christ, in glory, to which all the sufferings of this life bear not any the least proportion. Text 1 There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 2 For the law of the Spirit of life, in Christ Jesus, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God, sending his own Son, in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. For that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. 5 For they, that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. 6 For to be carnally minded, is death, but to be spiritually minded, is life and peace. 7 Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God neither indeed can be. 8 So then they that are in the flesh, cannot please God. 9 But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 10 And if Christ be in you, the body is dead, because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. 11 But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead, shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. 12 Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh to live after the flesh. 13 For, if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, but if ye, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. 14 For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, 
they are the sons of God. 15 For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 16 The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, that we are the children of God. 17 And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. 18 For I reckon, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 19 For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. 20 For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. 21 Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. 22 For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together, until now. 23 And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. 24 For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen, is not hope, for what a man seeth, why doth he yet help for? 25 But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. 26 Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for, as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. 27 And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints, according to the will of God. 28 And we know that all things work together for good, to them that love God, to them, who are the called according to his purpose. 29 For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. 30 Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. 31 What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? 32 He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? 33 Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. 34 Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. 35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. 36. As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 37. Nay in all these things we are more than conquerors, through him that loved us. 38. For I am persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, 39 nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paraphrase 1 There is, therefore, now, no condemnation to, 1. e. No sentence of death shall pass upon, those who are Christians, if so be they obey not the sinful lusts of the flesh, but follow, with sincerity of heart, comma to the dictates of the Spirit, in the Gospel, for the grace of God, which is effectual to life, has set me free from the law in my members, which cannot now produce sin in me, unto death pilcro. 3 For this, viz. the delivering us from sin, being beyond the power of the law, which was too weak to master the propensities of the flesh, God, sending his Son in flesh, that in all things, except sin, was like unto our frail, sinful flesh, and sending him also to be an offering for sin. 
he put to death, or extinguished, or suppressed sin in the flesh, 1. e. sending his son into the world, with the body, wherein the flesh could for never prevail, to the producing of any one sin, to the end that, under this example of the flesh, wherein sin was perfectly mastered and excluded from many life, the moral rectitude of the law might be conformed to by us, who, abandoning the lusts of the flesh, follow the guidance of the spirit, in the law of our minds, and make it our business to live, not after five the flesh, but after the spirit. For as for those who are still under the direction of the flesh, and its sinful appetites, who are under obedience to the law in their members, they have the thoughts and bent of their minds set upon the things of the flesh, to obey it in the lusts of it, but they, who are under the spiritual law of their minds, the thoughts and bent of their hearts is to follow the dictates of the spirit, in that sixth law, for to have our minds set upon the satisfaction of the lusts of the flesh, in a slavish obedience to them, does certainly produce and bring death upon us, but our setting ourselves, seriously and sincerely, to obey the dictates and direction of the spirit, produces life and peace, which are not to be had in the contrary comma seven carnal state, because to be carnally minded is direct enmity and opposition against God, for such a temper of mind, given up to the lusts of the flesh, is in no subjection to the law of God, nor indeed can be it aid having a quite contrary tendency, so then they that are in the flesh, 1. e. under the fleshly dispensation of the law, without regarding Christ, 9 the spirit of it, in it cannot please God, but ye are not in that state, of having all your expectation from the law, and the benefits, that are to be obtained barely by that, but are in the spiritual state of the law, 1. e. The gospel, which is the end of the law, and to which the law leads you, and so, having received the gospel, you have therewith received the Spirit of God, for, as many as receive Christ, he gives power to become the sons of God, and to tend those that are his sons, God gives his Spirit, and if Christ be in you, by his Spirit, the body is dead as to all activity to sin, sin no longer reigns in it, but your sinful, carnal lusts are mortified. But the spirit of your mind liveth, 1. e. is enlivened, in order to righteousness, or living righteously. 11. But, if the spirit of God, who had power able to raise Jesus Christ from the dead, dwell in you, as certainly it does, he, that raised Christ from the dead, is certainly able, and will by his spirit that dwells in you, enliven even your mortal bodies, that sin shall not of the soul power and rule there, but your members may be made living twelve instruments of righteousness. Therefore, brethren, we are not under any obligation to the flesh, to obey thirteen the lusts of it. For, if ye live after the flesh, that mortal part shall lead you to death irrecoverable, but if by the spirit, whereby Christ totally suppressed and hindered sin from having any life in his flesh, you mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall have fourteen eternal life, for, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, of an immortal race, and consequently like their father immortal. 15 For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again, to fear, but ye have received the Spirit of God, which is given to those who, having received adoption, our sons, whereby we are all enabled sixteen to call God our Father Pilcro. The Spirit of God himself beareth witness with our spirits that we are seventeen the children of God, and if children, then heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. 18 For I count that the sufferings of this transitory life bear no proportion to that glorious state, that shall be hereafter revealed, and set before the eyes 19 of the whole world, at our admittance into it. For the whole race of mankind, in an earnest expectation of this inconceivable, glorious immortality that 20 shall be bestowed on the sons of God, 
for mankind, created in a better state, was made, subject to the vanity of this calamitous fleeting life, not of its own choice, but by the guile of the devil Pilcro, who brought mankind into this mortal state, waiteth in twenty-one hope, that even they also shall be delivered from this subjection to corruption, and shall be brought into that glorious freedom from death, which is the twenty-two proper inheritance of the children of God. For we know that mankind, all of them, grown together, and unto this day are in pain, as a woman in labor, to be delivered out of the uneasiness of this mortal twenty-three state. And not only they, but even those, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, and there in the earnest of eternal life, we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the fruit of our adoption, which is, that, as we are by adoption made sons and co-heirs with Jesus Christ, so we may have bodies like unto his twenty foremost glorious body, spiritual and immortal. But we must wait with patience, for we have hitherto been saved but in hope and expectation but help is of things not in present possession, or enjoyment. For what a man hath, and seeth in his own hands, he no twenty-five longer hopes for. But if we hope for what is out of sight, and yet to come, then do we with twenty-six patience wait for it. Such, therefore, are our groans, which the Spirit, in aid to our infirmity, makes use of. For we know not what prayers to make as we ought but the Spirit itself layeth for us our requests before God, in groans that cannot be expressed. 27 in words, and God, the searcher of hearts, who understandeth this language of the Spirit, knoweth what the Spirit would have, because the Spirit is wont to make intercession for the twenty-eight saints, acceptably to God. Bear, therefore, your sufferings with patience and constancy for we certainly know that all things work together for good, to those that love God, who are the called, according 29 to his purpose of calling the Gentiles, in which purpose the Gentiles, whom he foreknew, as he did the Jews, with an intention of his kindness, and of making them his people, he preordained to be conformable to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn, the chief amongst many thirty brethren, moreover, whom he did thus preordain to be his people, them he also called, by sending preachers of the gospel to them, and whom he called, if they obeyed the truth, those he also justified, by counting their faith for righteousness, and whom he justified, them he also glorified, viz. in thirty-one his purpose. What shall we say, then? To these things, if God be for us, as, by what he has already done for us, it appears he is, who can be thirty-two against us, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up to death for us all, Gentiles as well as Jews, how shall he not with him also give us all thirty-three things, who shall be the prosecutor of those, whom God hath chosen, shall God, who justifieth thirty for them, who, as judge, shall condemn them, Christ, that died for us, yea rather that is risen again for our justification, and is at the right hand of God, 35 making intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ, shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, 36 or sword, for this is our lot, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted thirty-seven as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are already more than conquerors, by the grace and assistance of him that loved us. 38 For I am steadfastly persuaded, that neither the terrors of death, nor the allurements of life, nor angels, nor the princes and powers of this world semicolon thirty-nine nor things present nor anything future, nor the height of prosperity, nor the depth of misery, nor anything else whatsoever, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Sect 8 Chapter 9 1 10 21 
contents. There was nothing more grating and offensive to the Jews, than the thoughts of having the Gentiles joined with them, and partaking equally in the privileges and advantages of the kingdom of the Messiah, and, which was yet worse, to be told that those aliens should be admitted, and they, who presumed themselves children of that kingdom, to be shut out. St. Paul, who had insisted much on this doctrine, in all the foregoing chapters of this epistle, to show that he had not done it out of any aversion, or unkindness, to his nation and brethren, the Jews, does here express his great affection to them, and declares an extreme concern for their salvation. But with all he shows, that whatever privileges they had received from God, above other nations, whatever expectation the promises, made to their forefathers, might raise in them, they had yet no just reason of complaining of God's dealing with them, now under the gospel, since it was according to his promise to Abraham, and his frequent declarations in sacred scripture. Nor was it any injustice to the Jewish nation, if God now acted by the same sovereign power, wherewith he preferred Jacob, the younger brother, without any merit of his, and his posterity, to be his people, before Esau and his posterity, whom he rejected. The earth is all his, nor have the nations, that possess it, any title of their own, but what he gives them, to the countries they inhabit, nor the good things they enjoy, and he may dispossess, or exterminate them, when he pleaseth. And as he destroyed the Egyptians, for the glory of his name, in the deliverance of the Israelites, so he may, according to his good pleasure, raise or depress, take into favor, or eject, the several nations of this world, and particularly, as to the nation of the Jews, all, but a small remnant, were rejected, and the Gentiles taken in, in their room, to be the people and church of God, because they were again saying and disobedient people, that would not receive the Messiah, whom he had promised, and, in the appointed time, sent to them. He that will, with moderate attention and indifferency of mind, read this ninth chapter, will see that what is said, of God's exercising of an absolute power, according to the good pleasure of his will, relates only to nations, or bodies politic, of men, incorporated in civil societies which feel the effects of it only in the prosperity, or calamity, they meet with, in this world, but extends not to their eternal state, in another world, considered as particular persons, wherein they stand each man by himself, upon his own bottom, and shall so answer separately, at the day of judgment. They may be punished here, with their fellow citizens, as part of a sinful nation and that be but temporal chastisement for their good, and yet be advanced to eternal life and bliss, in the world to come. Text. 1 I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost, 2 that I have great heaviness and continual sorrow at my heart, 3 for I could wish, that myself were accursed from Christ, for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. For who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption, and the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises? 5 Whose are the fathers, and of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, God blessed for ever. Amen. 6 Not as though the word of God hath taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. 7 Neither because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children, but in Isaac shall thy seed be called. 8 That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. 9 For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come, and Sarah shall have a son. 10 And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. 11 For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good, or evil, that the purpose of God, according to election, might stand, not of works, 
but of him that calleth. 12 It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. 13 As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. 14 What shall we say then, Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. 15 For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. 16 So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that sheath mercy. 17 For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. 18 Therefore, hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will, he hardeneth. 19 Thou wilt say then unto me, Why do he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? 20 Nay but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed, say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? 21 Hath not the potter power over the clay? of the same lump to make one vessel unto honour, and another unto dishonour? 22 What, if God, willing to show his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath, fitted to destruction? 23 And that he might make known the riches of his glory, on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory? 24 Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. 25 As he saith also in O.Z., I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. 26 And it shall come to pass, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. 27 Isaiah's also creeth concerning Israel though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. 28 For he will finish the work, and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. 29 And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom, and been made like unto Gomorrah. 30 What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. 31 But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. 32 Wherefore, because they sought it, not by faith, but, as it were, by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. 33 As it is written, Behold I lay in Sion a stumbling stone, and rock of offence, and whosoever believeth on him, shall not be ashamed. 10. 1 Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is, that they might be saved. 2 For I bear them record, that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. 3 For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God, for for Christ is the end of the law, for righteousness, to every one that believeth. 5 For Moses describeth the righteousness, which is of the law, that the man, which doth these things, shall live by them. 6 But the righteousness which is of faith, speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, seven or who shall descend into the deep, that is, to bring up Christ again, from the dead, eight but what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach, nine that, if thou shalt confess, with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. 10 For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. 11 For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. 12 For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, 
for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. 13 For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. 14 How then shall they call on him, in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? 15 And how shall they preach, except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. 16 But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? 17 So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 18 But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth and their words unto the ends of the world. 19 But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. 20 But Isaiah is very bold, and saith, I was found of them that sought me not, I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. 21 But to Israel he saith, all day long have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Paraphrase. One I as a Christian speak truth, and my conscience, guided and enlightened by the Holy Ghost, bears me to witness, that I lie not, in my profession of great three heaviness and continual sorrow of heart. I could even wish that the destruction and extermination, to which my brethren the Jews are devoted by Christ, might, if it could save them from ruin, be executed on me, in the stead of those my kinsmen after the four flesh, who are Israelites, a nation dignified with these privileges, which were peculiar to them, adoption, whereby they were in a particular manner the sons of God, the glory of the divine presence amongst them, covenants, made between them and the great God of heaven and the earth, the moral law a constitution of civil government, and a form of divine worship prescribed by God himself, and all five the promises of the Old Testament, had the patriarchs, to whom the promises were made, for their forefathers, and of them, as to his fleshly extraction, Christ is come, he who is over all. God be six blessed for ever. Amen. I commiserate my nation for not receiving the promised Messiah, now he is come, and I speak of the great prerogatives, they had from God, above other nations, but I say not this, as if it were possible, that the promise of God should fail of performance, and not have its effect pilcro. But it is to be observed, for a right understanding of the promise, that the sole descendants of Jacob, or Israel, do not make up the whole nation of Israel, or the people of God, comprehended seven in the promise, nor are they, who are the race of Abraham, all children, but only his posterity by Isaac, as it is said, in Isaac shall thy seed be eight called. That is, the children of the flesh, descended out of Abraham's loins, are not thereby the children of God, and to be esteemed his people but the children of the promise, as Isaac was, are nine alone to be accounted his seed. For thus runs the word of promise, At this time I will come, and ten Sarah shall have a son. Nor was this the only limitation of the seed of Abraham, to whom the promise belonged, but also, when Rebekah had conceived by that one of Abraham's issue, to whom the promise was made, viz. Our father Isaac, and their eleven were twins in her womb, of that one father, before the children were born, or had done any good, or evil, to show that his making any stock, or race, of men his peculiar people, depended solely on his own purpose and good pleasure, in choosing and calling them, and not on any works or deserts of theirs, he, acting here in the case of Jacob and Esau, according twelve to the predetermination of his own choice, it was declared unto her, that there were two nations in her womb, and that the descendants of the elder thirteen brothers should serve those of the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, so as to make his posterity my chosen people, 
and Esau I put so much behind him, as to lay his mountains and fourteen his heritage waste. What shall we say then, is there any injustice with God, in choosing one people to himself before another? according to his good fifteen pleasure. By no means, my brethren, the Jews themselves cannot charge any such thing on what I say, since they have it from Moses himself. That God declared to him, that he would be gracious, to whom he would be gracious, and show mercy, on sixteen whom he would show mercy. So then, neither the purpose of Isaac, who designed it for Esau, and willed him to prepare himself for it, nor the endeavours of Esau, who ran a hunting for venison to come and receive it, could place on him the blessing, but the favour of being made, in his posterity, a great and prosperous nation, the peculiar people of God, preferred to that which should descend from his brother, was bestowed on Jacob, by the mere seventeen bounty and good pleasure of God himself. The like hath Moses left us upon record, of God's dealing with Pharaoh and his subjects, the people of Egypt, to whom God saith, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be eighteen renowned through all the earth. Therefore, that his name and power may be made known, and taken notice of, in the world, he is kind and bountiful to one nation, and lets another go on obstinately, in their opposition to him, that his taking them off, by some signal calamity and ruin, brought on them by the visible hand of his providence, may be seen, and acknowledged to be an effect of their standing out against him, as in the case of Pharaoh, for this end he is bountiful, to whom he will be bountiful, and whom he will. He permits to make such an use of his forbearance towards them, as to persist obdurate in their provocation of him, and draw on themselves nineteen exemplary destruction. To this, some may be ready to say, why then does he find fault? For who, at any time, hath been able to resist his twenty will? Say you so, indeed. But who art thou, O man, that repliest thus to God? Shall the nations, that are made great or little, shall kingdoms, that are raised or depressed, say to him, in whose hands they are, to dispose of them as he pleases, why twenty-one hast thou made us thus? Hath not the pot a power over the clay, of the same lump, to make this twenty-two a vessel of honour, and that of dishonour? But what hast thou to say, O man of Judea, if God, willing to show his wrath, and have his power taken notice of, in the execution of it, did, with much long-suffering, bear, with the sinful nation of the Jews, even when they were proper objects of that wrath, fit to have it poured out upon them, in their destruction semicolon 23 that he might make known the riches of his glory, on those whom, being objects of his twenty-four mercy, he had before prepared to glory, even us Christians, whom he hath also called, not only of twenty-five the Jews, but also of the Gentiles as he hath declared in O.Z., I will call them my people, who were not my people, and her beloved, who was twenty-six not beloved. And it shall come to pass, that in the place, where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children twenty-seven of the living God. Isaiah creeth also, concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet it is but a remnant twenty-eight that shall be saved, for the Lord, finishing and contracting the account in righteousness, shall make a twenty-nine short, or small remainder in the earth. And, as Isaiah said before, unless the Lord of hosts had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom, and been made like unto Gomorrah, we had utterly thirty been extirpated. What then remains to be said? but this, that the Gentiles who sought not after righteousness, have obtained the righteousness, which is by faith, and thereby are become the people of thirty-one God, but the children of Israel, who followed the law, which contained the rule of righteousness, have not attained to that law, whereby righteousness is to be attained, one. e. have not received the gospel, 
32 and so are not the people of God. How came they to miss it? Because they sought not to attain it by faith, but as if it were to be obtained by the works of the law. A crucified Messiah was a stumbling block to them, and at that they stumbled, as it 33 is written, Behold, I lay in sign a stumbling stone, and a rock of offense, and whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. 10. 1 Brethren, my hearty desire and prayer to God for two Israelis, that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they are zealous, and as they think for God and his law, but their zeal is not guided by three true knowledge, for they, being ignorant of the righteousness that is of God, viz. that righteousness which he graciously bestows and accepts of, and going about to establish a righteousness of their own, which they seek for, in their own performances, have not brought themselves to submit to the law of the gospel, wherein the righteousness of God comma for one. e. Righteousness by faith is offered. For the end of the law was to bring men to Christ, that, by believing in him, every one, that did so, might be justified five by faith. For Moses describeth the righteousness, that was to be hid by the law, thus, that the man, which doth the things required in the law, shall six of life thereby. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaketh after this manner, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is, to bring down the Messiah from thence, whom we seven expect personally here on earth to deliver us, or who shall descend into the deep. 1. E. To bring up Christ again, from the dead, to be our Saviour? You mistake the deliverance, you expect by the Messiah, the needs not the fetching him from the other eight world, to be present with you, the deliverance, by him, is a deliverance from sin, that you may be made righteous by faith in him, and that speaks thus, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith, or the doctrine nine of the gospel, which we preach, viz. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth, 1. e. Openly own Jesus the Lord, 1. e. Jesus to be the Messiah, thy Lord, and shalt believe in thy heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, otherwise he cannot be believed to be the Messiah, Thou shalt be saved. Ten. It was not for nothing that Moses, in the place above cited, mentioned both heart and mouth, there is use of both in the case. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the eleven mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believe on him, shall not be ashamed, shall not repent his having believed, comma twelve and owning it. The scripture saith, Whosoever, for in this case there is no distinction of Jew and Gentile, for it is he, the same who is Lord of them all, and is abundantly bountiful to all that call thirteen upon him. For whosoever shall call upon his fourteen name, shall be saved. But how shall they call upon him, on whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear? without a fifteen preacher. And how shall they preach, except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace, and bring glad tidings of good things. 16 But, though there be messengers sent from God, to preach the gospel, yet it is not to be expected, that all should receive and obey it. For Isaiah hath foretold that they should not, saying, Lord, who seventeen hath believed our report. That which we may learn from thence is, that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing from the word of God. 1. e. The revelation of the gospel, in the writings of the sacred scriptures, communicated by those, whom God sends as preachers thereof, to those who are ignorant of it, and there is no need, that Christ should be brought down from heaven to be personally with eighteen new, to be your saviour. It is enough, that both Jews and Gentiles have heard of him, by messengers, whose voice is gone out into the whole earth, and words unto the ends of the world, 
far beyond the nineteen bounds of Judea. But I ask, did not Israel know this, that the Gentiles were to be taken in, and made the people of God? First Moses tells it them, from God, who says, I will provoke you to jealousy, by them who are no people, and by a twenty foolish nation I will anger you. But Isaiah declares it yet much plainer, in these words, I was found of them that sought me not, I was made twenty-one manifest to them that asked not after me. And to Israel, to show their refusal, he saith, All day long have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Sect 9 Chapter 11 1 36 Contents The Apostle, in this chapter, goes on to show the future state of the Jews and Gentiles, in respect of Christianity, viz. that, though the nation of the Jews were, for their unbelief, rejected, and the Gentiles taken, in their room, to be the people of God, yet there were a few of the Jews, that believed in Christ, and so a small remnant of them continued to be God's people, being incorporated, with the converted Gentiles into the Christian church. But they shall, the whole nation of them, when the fullness of the Gentiles is come in, be converted to the gospel, and again be restored to be the people of God. The apostle takes occasion also, from God's having rejected the Jews, to warn the Gentile converts, that they take heed, since, if God cast off his ancient people, the Jews, for their unbelief, the Gentiles could not expect to be preserved, if they apostatized from the faith, and kept not firm in their obedience to the gospel. Text. 1 I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid, for I also am an Israelite, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. 2 God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture saith, of Elias? how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Three Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. For but what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men, who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Five even so, then, at this present time also, there is a remnant, according to the election of grace. 6 And if by grace, then is it no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. 7 What then? Israel hath not obtained that, which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded, 8 According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear, unto this day. 9 And David saith, Let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. 10 Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. 11 I say then, Have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid but rather through their fall salvation is come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. 12 Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? 13 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. 14 If, by any means, I may provoke to emulation them, which are my flesh, and might save some of them. 15 For, if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be, but life from the dead? 16 For if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy, and if the root be holy, so are the branches. 17 And if some of the branches be broken off, and thou, being a wild olive tree, were gruffed in amongst them and with them partakest of the root and fatness of the olive tree. 18 Boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. 19 Thou wilt say then, the branches were broken off, 
that I might be gruffed, in, twenty well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith, be not high minded, but fear, twenty one four, if God spare not the natural branches, take heed lest he also spare not thee, twenty two behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, on them which fell, severity, but towards thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off, 23 and they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be gruffed in, for God is able to gruff them in again, 24 for, if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert gruffed, contrary to nature, into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grift into their own olive tree, 25 for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles be coming, 26 and so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, they shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. 27 For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. 28 As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. 29 For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. 30 For as ye, in times past, have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy, through their unbelief. 31 Even so have these also now not believed, that, through your mercy, they also may obtain mercy. 32 For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. 33 O oh the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments! and his ways past finding out. 34 For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counsellor? 35 Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? 36 For of him, and through him, and to him, are all things, to whom be glory for ever. Amen. Paraphrase. 1 I say then, has God wholly cast away his people, the Jews, from being his people? by no means, for I myself am an Israelite, of the seed of Abraham, comma two of the tribe of Benjamin, God hath not utterly cast off his people, whom he formerly owned, with so peculiar a respect. Know ye not what the scripture saith, concerning Elijah, how he complained to three the God of Israel, in these words, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and have digged down thine altars and of all that worshipped thee, I for alone am left, and they seek my life also. But what saith the answer of God to him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men, who have not bowed the knee to Baal, that is have not been five guilty of idolatry. Even so at this time also, there is a remnant reserved and segregated, by the favour six and free choice of God. Which reservation of a remnant? if it be by grace and favour, it is not of works, for then grace would not be grace, but if it were of works, then is it not grace, for then work would not be work, 1. e. Work gives the right, grace bestows the favour, where there is no right to it, so that what is conferred by the one, cannot be ascribed seven to the other, how is it then, even thus, Israel, or the nation of the Jews, obtained not what it seeks, but the election, or that part, which was to remain God's elect, chosen people, obtained it, but eight the rest of them were blinded, according as it is written, God hath given them, the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that nine they should not hear, unto this day. And David saith, Let their table be made a snare and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto ten them, let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. 11 What then do I say, that they have so stumbled, as to be fallen past recovery? By no means, but this I say, 
that by their fall, by their rejection for refusing the gospel, the privilege of becoming the people of God, by receiving the doctrine of salvation, is come to the Gentiles, to provoke the Jews to twelve jealousy. Now, if the fall of the Jews hath been to the enriching of the rest of the world, and their damage and advantage to the Gentiles, by letting them into the church, how much more shall their completion be so, when their whole nation shall thirteen be restored? This I say to you Gentiles, for as much as being apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify fourteen mine office, if, by any means, I may provoke to emulation the Jews, who are my own flesh and blood, and bring some of them into the way of fifteen salvation. For, if the casting them off be a means of reconciling the world, what shall their restoration be, when they are taken again into favour, but as it were life from the dead, which is to sixteen all mankind of all nations. For if the first fruits be holy and accepted, the whole product of the year is holy, and will be accepted. And if Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, from whom the Jewish nation had their original, were holy, the branches also, that seventeen sprang from this root, are holy. If then some of the natural branches were broken off, if some of the natural Jews, of the stock of Israel, were broken off and rejected, and thou a heathen, of the wild Gentile race, wert taken in, and engrafted into the church of God, in their room, and the partakest of the blessings comma eighteen promised to Abraham and his seed, be not so conceited of thyself, as to show any disrespect to the Jews. If any such vanity possesses thee, remember that the privilege thou hast, in being a Christian, is derived to thee from the promise made to Abraham, and his seed, but nothing accrues to Abraham, or his nineteen race, by anything derived from thee. Thou wilt perhaps say, the Jews were rejected to make way twenty for me. Well, let it be so, but remember that it was because of unbelief, that they were broken off, and that it is by faith alone, that thou hast obtained, and must keep thy present station. This ought to be a warning to thee, not to have any haughty conceit twenty-one of thyself, but with modesty to fear. For if God spared not the seed of Abraham, but cast off even the children of Israel, for their unbelief he will certainly not spare thee if thou art guilty of the like twenty-two miscarriage. Mind, therefore, the benignity and rigour of God, rigour to them that stumbled at the gospel and fell, but benignity to thee, if thou continue within the sphere of his benignity. 1. e. In the faith, by which thou partakest of the privilege of being one of his people, otherwise even thou also twenty-three shalt be cut off, and the Jews also, if they continue not in unbelief, shall be again grafted into the stock of Abraham, and be re-established the people of God. For, however they are now scattered, and under subjection to strangers, God is able to collect them again into one body, make them his people, and set them twenty-four in a flourishing condition, in their own land. For if you, who are heathens by birth, and not of the promised seed, were, when you had neither claim, nor inclination to it, brought into the church, and made the people of God, how much more shall those, who are the posterity and descendants of him to whom the promise was made, be restored to the state, 25 which the promise vested in that family. For to prevent your being conceited of yourselves, my brethren, let me make known to you, which has yet been undiscovered to the world viz. that the blindness, which has fallen upon part of Israel, shall remain upon them, but till the time be come, wherein the whole Gentile world shall enter into the church, 26 and make profession of Christianity. And so all Israel shall be converted to the Christian faith, and the whole nation become the people of God, as it is written, they shall come out of Sion the deliverer, and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob.27 For this is my covenant to them, when I 28 shall take away their sins. They are, indeed, at present, strangers to the gospel, and so are in the state of enemies, 
but this is for your sakes, their fall and loss is your enriching, you having obtained admittance, through their being cast out, but yet they, being within the election, that God made, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and their posterity, to be his people, are still his beloved people, for Abraham, Isaac, and twenty-nine Jacob's sake, from whom they are descended. For the favours, that God showed those their fathers, in calling them and their posterity to be his people, he doth not repent of, but his promise, that they thirty shall be his people, shall stand good. For as you, the Gentiles, formerly stood out, and were not the people of God, but yet have now obtained mercy, so as to be taken in, through the standing out of the thirty-one Jews, who submit not to the gospel, even so they, now, have stood out, by reason of your being in mercy admitted, that they also, through the mercy you have received, may again hereafter be admitted. 32 For God hath put up together, in a state of revolt, from their allegiance to him, as it were in one fold, all men, both Jews and Gentiles, that, through his mercy, they might all, both Jews and Gentiles, come to be his people, 1. e. He hath suffered both Jews and Gentiles, in their turns, not to be his people, that he might bring the whole body both of Jews and Gentiles, 33 to be his people. O oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways not to be thirty four traced. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Semicolon 35 Or who hath sat in council with him? Or who hath been beforehand with him, in bestowing anything upon him? that God may repay it to him again question mark 36 the thought of any such thing is absurd for from him all things have their being and original by him they are all ordered and disposed of and for him and his glory they are all made and regulated to whom be glory for ever amen sect 10 chapter 12 1 21 contents saint paul in the end of the foregoing chapter, with a very solemn epiphenoma, closes that admirable, evangelical discourse, to the church at Rome, which had taken up the eleven foregoing chapters. It was addressed to the two sorts of converts, viz. Gentiles and Jews, into which, as into two distinct bodies, he all along, through this epistle, divides all mankind, and considers them, as so divided, into two separate corporations. As to the Gentiles, he endeavours to satisfy them, that though they, for their apostasy from God to idolatry, and the worship of false gods, had been abandoned by God, and lived in sin and blindness, without God in the world, strangers from the knowledge and acknowledgement of him, yet that the mercy of God, through Jesus Christ, was extended to them whereby there was a way now open to them, to become the people of God. For since no man could be saved, by his own righteousness, no not the Jews themselves, by the deeds of the law, the only way to salvation, both for Jews and Gentiles, was by faith in Jesus Christ. Nor had the Jews any other way, now, to continue themselves the people of God, than by receiving the gospel, which way was opened also to the Gentiles, and they as freely admitted into the kingdom of God, now erected under Jesus Christ, as the Jews, and upon the sole terms of believing, so that there was no need at all for the Gentiles to be circumcised, to become Jews, that they might be partakers of the benefits of the gospel. As to the Jews, the apostles are the great aim, in the foregoing discourse, is to remove the offence the Jews took at the gospel, because the Gentiles were received into the church, as the people of God, and were allowed to be subjects of the kingdom of the Messiah. To bring them to a better temper, he shows them, from the sacred scripture, that they could not be saved by the deeds of the law, and therefore the doctrine of righteousness, by faith, ought not to be so strange a thing to them. And, as to their being, for their unbelief, rejected from being the people of God, and the Gentiles taken in their room. He shows plainly, 
that this was foretold them in the Old Testament, and that herein God did them no injustice. He was sovereign over all mankind, and might choose whom he would, to be his people, with the same freedom that he chose the posterity of Abraham, among all the nations of the earth, and of that race chose the descendants of Jacob, before those of his elder brother Esau, and that, before they had a being, or were capable of doing good or evil. In all which discourse of his it is plain. The election spoken of has for its object only nations, or collective bodies politic, in this world, and not particular persons, in reference to their eternal state in the world to come. Having thus finished the principal design of his writing, he here, in this, as is usual with him in all his epistles, concludes with practical and moral exhortations, whereof there are several in this chapter, which we shall take in their order. Text 1 I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. 2 And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect will of God. 3 For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. 4 For, as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, 5 So we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. 6 Having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. 7 Or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth, on teaching, 8 Or he that exhorteth, on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth, with diligence, he that sheweth mercy, with cheerfulness. 9 Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. 10 Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. 11 Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. 12 Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. 13 Distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. 14 Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. 15 Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. 16 Be of the same mind one towards another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. 17 Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. 18 If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. 19 Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. 20 Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him, if he thirst, give him drink, for, in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. 21 Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Paraphrase 1 It being so then, that you are become the people of God, in the room of the Jews, do not ye fail to offer him that sacrifice, that it is reasonable for you to do, I mean your bodies, not to be slain but the lusts thereof being mortified, and the body cleansed from the spots and blemishes of sin, will be an acceptable offering to him, and such a way of worship, as becomes a rational creature, which therefore I beseech you, by the mercies of God to you, who has made you his two people to present to him, and be not conformed to the fashion of this world, but be ye transformed, in the renewing of your minds, that you may, upon examination, find out what is the good, the acceptable and perfect will of God, which now, under the gospel, has shown itself to be in purity and holiness of life, the ritual observances, 
which he once instituted, not being that, his good, acceptable, and perfect will, which he always intended, they were made only the types and preparatory way to this more perfect three state under the gospel. For by virtue of that commission, to be the apostle of the Gentiles, which, by the favor of God, is bestowed on me, I bid every one of you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to have sober and modest thoughts of himself, according to that measure of spiritual gifts, which God has bestowed upon him. For for, as there are many members in one and the same body, but all the members are not appointed to the five same work, so we, who are many, may call but one body in Christ, and are all fellow members one six of another. But having, according to the respective favor that is bestowed upon us, every one of us different gifts, whether it be prophecy, let us prophesy, according to the proportion of faith, or gift of interpretation, which is given us, 1. e. As far forth as we are enabled by revelation and an extraordinary illumination to understand, and expound 7 it, and no farther, or, if it be ministry, let us wait on our ministering, he that is a teacher, let him may take care to teach, he, whose gift is exhortation, let him be diligent in exhorting, he that giveth, let him do it liberally, and without the mixture of any self-interest, he that presideth, let him do it with diligence, he that sheweth mercy, let him do nine it with cheerfulness, let love be without dissimulation, abhor that which is evil, stick to that ten which is good, be kindly affectioned one towards another, with brotherly love, in honor preferring eleven one another, not slothful in business, but active and vigorous in mind, directing all the service of twelve Christ and the gospel, rejoicing in the hope you have of heaven and happiness, patient in tribulation semicolon 13 frequent and instant in prayer, forward to help Christians in want, according to their necessities semicolon 14 given to hospitality, bless them who persecute 15 you, bless and curse not, rejoice with them 16 that rejoice, and weep with them that weep, be of the same mind one towards another, do not mind only high things, but suit yourselves to the mean condition and low concerns of persons beneath you. 17 Be not wise in your own conceits, render to no man evil for evil, but take care that your carriage 18 be such as may be approved by all men, if it be possible, as much as lieth in you live peaceably with nineteen all men. Dearly beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather leave that to God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay it, saith the twenty Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him, if he thirst, give him drink, if this prevail on him, thou subduest an enemy, and gainest a friend, if he persists still in his enmity, in so doing, thou heapest coals of fire on his head. 1. e. Exposest him 21 to the wrath of God, who will be thy avenger. Be not overcome and prevailed on, by the evil thou receivest, to retaliate, but endeavour to master the malice of an enemy in injuring thee, by a return of kindness and good offices to him. Sect. 11. Chapter 13. 1. 7. Contents. This section contains the duty of Christians to the civil magistrate, for the understanding this right, we must consider these two things. That these rules are given to Christians, that were members of a heathen commonwealth, to show them that, by being made Christians and subjects of Christ's kingdom, they were not, by the freedom of the gospel, exempt from any ties of duty, or subjection which by the laws of their country, they were in, and ought to observe, to the government and magistrates of it, though heathens, any, more than any of their heathen subjects. But, on the other side, these rules did not tie them up, any more than any of their fellow citizens, who were not Christians, from any of those due rights, which, by the law of nature, or the constitutions of their country, 
belonged to them whatsoever any other of their fellow subjects, being in a like station with them, might do without sinning, that they were not abridged of, but might do still, being Christians. The rule here being the same with that given by St. Paul, 1 Corinthians 7. 17, As God has called everyone, so let him walk. The rules of civil right and wrong, that he is to walk by, are to him the same they were before. That St. Paul, in this direction to the Romans, does not so much describe the magistrates that then were in Rome, as tells whence they, and all magistrates, everywhere, have their authority, and for what end they have it, and should use it, and this he does, as becomes his prudence, to avoid bringing any imputation on Christians, from heathen magistrates, especially those insolent and vicious ones of Rome, who could not brook anything to be told them as their duty, and so might be apt to interpret such plain truths laid down in a dogmatical way, into sauciness, sedition, or to reason, a scandal cautiously to be kept off from the Christian doctrine. Nor does he, in what he says, in the least flatter the Roman emperor, let it be either Claudius, as some think, or Nero, as others, who then was in possession of that empire. For he here speaks of the higher powers, 1. e. the supreme civil power, which is, in every commonwealth, derived from God, and is of the same extent everywhere, 1. e. is absolute and unlimited by anything, but the end for which God gave it, viz. the good of the people, sincerely pursued, according to the best of the skill of those who share that power, and so not to be resisted. But, how men come by a rightful title to this power? or who has the title, he is wholly silent, and says nothing of it. To have meddled with that, would have been to decide of civil rights, contrary to the design and business of the gospel, and the example of our Saviour, who refused meddling in such cases with this decisive question, who made me a judge, or divider, over you. Luke 12. 14 text, 1 let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power, but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God, 2 whosoever, therefore, resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist, shall receive to themselves damnation, 3 for rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil, wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of their same, for for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doth evil. 5 Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. 6 For, for this cause, pay you tribute also for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. 7 Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honour to whom honour. Paraphrase 1 Let every one of you, none excepted, be subject to the overruling powers of the government he lives in. 2 There is no power but what is from God. The powers that are in being, are ordained by God, so that he, who resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist, will be punished by those three powers that they resist. What should you be afraid of? Rulers are no terror to those that do well, but to those that do ill. Wilt thou then not live in dread of the civil power? Do that which is good and right and then praise only is thy due from the magistrate. For for he is the officer and minister of God, appointed only for thy good. But, if thou doest amiss, then thou hast reason to be afraid, for he bears not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, and executioner of wrath and punishment upon him that five doth ill. This being the end of government, and the business of the magistrate, to cherish the good and punish ill men, it is necessary for you to submit to government, 
not only in apprehension of the punishment, which disobedience will draw on you, but out of conscience, as a duty required of you by God. 6 This is the reason why also you pay tribute, which is due to the magistrates, because they employ their care, time and pains, for the public weal, in punishing and restraining the wicked and vicious, and in countenancing and supporting the virtuous seven and good. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, and honor to whom honor. Sect 12 Chapter 13 8 14 Contents He exhorts them to love, which is, in effect, the fulfilling of the whole law. Text 8 O oh, no man anything but to love one another, for he, that loveth another, hath fulfilled the law. 9 For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and, if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. 10 Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore, Love is the fulfilling of the law. 11 And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. 12 The night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us, therefore, cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. 13 Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. 14 But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh, to fulfill the lusts thereof. Paraphrase 8 Owe oh, nothing to anybody, but affection and good will, mutually to one another, for he, that loves others sincerely, as he does himself, has fulfilled the law. 9 For this precept, thou shalt not commit adultery thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and whatever other command there be, concerning social duties, it in short is comprehended in this, thou ten shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love permits us to do no harm to our neighbor, and therefore is the fulfilling of the whole law of the second eleven table, and all this do considering that it is now high time that we rouse ourselves up, shake off sleep, and betake ourselves, with vigilancy and vigor, to the duties of a Christian life. For the time of your removal, out of this place of exercise and probationership, is nearer than when you first entered twelve into the profession of Christianity. The night, the dark state of this world, wherein the good and the bad can scarce be distinguished is far spent. The day, that will show every one in his own dress and colors, is at hand. Let us, therefore, put away the works, that we should be ashamed of, but in the dark, and let us put on the dress and ornaments, that we should be willing to appear in, in the light. 13 Let our behavior be decent, and our carriage such, as affairs not the light, nor the eyes of men not in disorderly feastings and drunkenness, nor in dalliance and wantonness, nor in strife and envy. 14 But walk in newness of life, in obedience to the precepts of the gospel, as becomes those who are baptized into the faith of Christ, and let not the great employment of your thoughts and cares be wholly in making provision for the body, that you may have wherewithal to satisfy your carnal lusts. Sect. 13. Chapter 14. 1. 15. 13. Contents. St. Paul instructs both the strong and the weak in their mutual duties one to another, in respect of things indifferent, teaching them, that the strong should not use their liberty, where it might offend a weak brother, nor the weak censure the strong, for using their liberty. Text. 1. Him that is weak in the faith receive you, but not to doubtful disputations. 2. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another, who is weak, eateth herbs. 3. Let not him, that eateth, despise him that eateth not, and let not him, 
which eateth not, judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. For who art thou, that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth, yea, he shall be holden up, for God is able to make him stand. 5 One man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. 6 He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord, and he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, for he giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not, to the Lord he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. 7 For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. 8 For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord, whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. 9 For to this end Christ both died, and rose, and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and living. 10 But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 11 For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. 12 So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. 13 Let us not, therefore, judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block, or an occasion to fall, in his brother's way. 14 I know, and am persuaded by the Lord Jesus, that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him that esteemeth anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. 15 But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, now walkest thou not charitably, destroy not him with thy meat for whom Christ did. 16 Let not then your good be evil spoken of. 17 For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, and peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. 18 For he that in these things serveth Christ, is acceptable to God, and approved of men. 19 Let us, therefore, follow after the things which make for peace, and things wherewith one may edify another. 20 For meat destroy not the work of God. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for that man who eateth with offence. 21 It is good neither to eat flesh, nor to drink wine, nor anything whereby thy brother stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. 22 Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. 23 And he that doubteth, is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith, is sin. 15. 1. We then that are strong, ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. 2. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. 3. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee, fell on me. For for whatsoever things were written, aforetime, were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. 5 Now the God of patience and consolation, grant you to be like-minded one towards another, according to Christ Jesus. 6 That ye may, with one mind and one mouth, glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 7 Wherefore, receive ye one another, as Christ also received us, to the glory of God. 8 Now I say that Jesus Christ was a minister of the circumcision for the truth of God, to confirm the promises made unto the fathers. 9 And that the Gentiles might glorify God, for his mercy, as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. 10 And again he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with his people. 11 And again, Praise the Lord, all ye Gentiles, and Lord him, all ye people. 12 And again he saith, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles 
in him shall the Gentiles trust. 13 Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Paraphrase, 1 Him, that is weak in the faith, 1. E. Not fully persuaded of his Christian liberty, in the use of some indifferent thing, receive you into your friendship and conversation, without any coldness, or distinction, but do not engage him in disputes and controversies too about it. For such variety is there in men's persuasions about their Christian liberty, that one believeth that he may, without restraint, eat all things, another is so scrupulous, that he eateth nothing but three herbs, let not him, that is persuaded of his liberty, and eateth, despise him that, through scruple, eateth not, and let not him, that is more doubtful, and eateth not, judge, or censure, him that eateth, for God hath received him into his church and family colon four and who art thou, that takest upon thee to judge the domestic of another, whether he be of his family, or no, it is his own master alone, who is to judge, whether he be, or shall continue, his domestic, or number what hast thou to do, to meddle in the case, but trouble not thyself he shall stand and stay in the family, for God is able to confirm and establish him five there. One man judgeth one day to be set apart to God, more than another, another man judgeth every day to be God's alike. Let every one take care to be satisfied in his own mind, touching the six matter. But let him not censure another in what he doth. He that observeth the day, observeth it as the Lord's servant, in obedience to him and he that observeth it not, passes by that observance, as the Lord's servant, in obedience also to the Lord. He that eateth what another out of scruple forbears, eateth it as the Lord's servant, for he giveth God thanks. And he that, out of scruple, forbeareth to eat, does it also as the Lord's servant, for he giveth God thanks even for that which he doth comma seven and thinks he may not eat. For no one of us Christians liveth, as if he were his own man, perfectly at his own disposal, and no one of us dies eight so. For, whether we live, our life is appropriated to the Lord, or, whether we die, to him we die, as his servants. For whether we live, or die, we, are his, in his family, his domestics, appropriated to him. 9 For to this end Christ died, and rose, and lived again, that he might be Lord and proprietor of us, both ten dead and living. What hast thou then to do, to judge thy brother, who is none of thy servant, but thy equal? Or how darest thou to think contemptibly of him? For we shall, thou, and he, and all of us, be brought before the judgment seat of Christ and there we shall answer, every one for himself, to eleven our Lord and Master. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and twelve every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to thirteen God. Let us not, therefore, take upon us to judge one another, but rather come to this judgment, or determination of mind that no man put a shambling block, or an occasion of falling, in his brother's fourteen way. I know and am fully assured by the Lord Jesus, that there is nothing unclean or unlawful to be eaten, of itself, but to him, that accounts any fifteen thing to be unclean, to him it is unclean. But if thy brother be grieved with thy meat, thy carriage is uncharitable to him, destroy not him with thy sixteen meat for whom Christ died. Let not then your liberty, which is a good you enjoy, under the gospel, comma 17 be evil spoken of, for the privileges and advantages of the kingdom of God do not consist in the enjoyment of greater variety of meats and drinks, but in uprightness of life, peace of all kinds, and joy in the gifts and benefits of the Holy Ghost, comma 18 under the gospel, for he that, in these things, pays his allegiance and service to Jesus Christ, as a dutiful subject of his kingdom, is acceptable to God, 19 and approved of men, 
the things, therefore, that we set our hearts upon, to pursue and promote, let them be such as tend to peace and goodwill, and twenty the mutual edification of one another. Do not, for a little meat, destroy a man. That is the work of God, and no ordinary piece of workmanship. It is true, all sort of wholesome food is pure, and defileth not a man's conscience, but yet it is evil to him who twenty-one eateth anything so as to offend his brother. It is better to forbear flesh, and wine, and anything, rather than in the use of thy liberty, in any indifferent things, to do that, whereby thy brother twenty-two stumbleth, or is offended, or is made weak. Thou art fully persuaded of the lawfulness of eating the meat which thou eatest, it is well. Happy is he, that is not self-condemned in the thing that he practices. But have a care to keep this faith or persuasion, to thyself, let it be between God and thy own conscience, raise no dispute about it, neither make twenty-three ostentation of it, by thy practice before others. But he that is in doubt, and balanceth, is self-condemned, if he eat, because he doth it, without a full persuasion of the lawfulness of it. For whatever a man doth, which he is not fully persuaded in his own fifteen. 1. Mind to be lawful, is sin. We, then, that are strong, ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to indulge our own appetites, or inclinations, in such an use of indifferent things, as may offend the too weak. But let every one of us please his neighbor, comply with his infirmities for his good and to edification.3 For even Christ, our Lord, pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them for that reproached thee, are fallen upon me. For whatsoever was heretofore written, 1. E. In the Old Testament, was written for our learning, that we through patience, and the comfort which the scriptures give five us, might have hope. Now God, who is the giver of patience and consolation, make you to be at unity one with another, according to the will of Christ Jesus semicolon 6 that you may, with one mind and one mouth, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. 7 Wherefore, admit and receive one another into fellowship and familiarity, without shyness, or distance, upon occasion of differences about things in different comma eight even as Christ received us Jews to glorify God, for I must tell you, ye converted Romans, that Christ was sent to the Jews, and employed all his ministry on those of the circumcision, for his truth, in making good his promise made to the fathers, 1. e. Abraham comma nine Isaac, and Jacob, and received you, the Gentiles to glorify God for his mercy to you, as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles, and sing unto thy name. 10 And again, he saith, Rejoice, ye Gentiles, with eleven his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all ye twelve Gentiles, and laud him, all ye nations. And again, Isaiah saith, There shall be a root of Jesse and he that shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, 13 in him shall the Gentiles trust. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that ye may abound in hope, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Sect. 14. Chapter 15. 14. 33. Contents. In the remaining part of this chapter, St. Paul makes a very kind and skillful apology to them, for this epistle, expresses an earnest desire of coming to them, touches upon the reasons, that hitherto had hindered him, desires their prayers for his deliverance from the Jews, in his journey to Jerusalem, whither he was going, and promises that, from thence, he will make them a visit in his way to Spain. Text 14 And I myself also am persuaded of you, my brethren, that ye also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, able also to admonish one another. 15 Nevertheless, brethren, I have written the more boldly unto you, in some sort, as putting you in mind, 
because of the grace that is given to me of God, 16 that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering up of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost, 17 I have therefore whereof I may glory, through Jesus Christ, in those things which pertain unto God, 18 for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by me, to make the Gentiles obedient, by word and deed, 19 through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem, and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ, 20 yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. 21 But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they that have not heard, shall understand. 22 For which cause also I have been much hindered from coming to you. 23 But now, having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire, these many years, to come unto you, 24 Whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way thitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company, 25 But now am I go unto Jerusalem, to minister unto the saints, 26 For it hath pleased them of Macedonia, and Achaia, to make a certain contribution for the poor saints, which are at Jerusalem. 27 It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are, for, if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. 28 When, therefore, I have performed this, and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come, by you, into Spain. 29 And I am sure that, when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness of the gospel of Christ. 30 Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that ye strive, together with me, in your prayers to God for me. 31 That I may be delivered from them that do not believe, in Judea, and that my service, which I have for Jerusalem, may be accepted of the saints. 32 That I may come unto you with joy, by the will of God, and may with you be refreshed. 33 Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Paraphrase. 14 As to my own thoughts concerning you, my brethren, I am persuaded that you also, as well as others, are full of goodness, abounding in all knowledge, and 15 able to instruct one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written to you, in some things, pretty freely, as your remembrancer, which I have been emboldened to do, by the commission, which God has been sixteen graciously pleased to bestow on me, whom he hath made to be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, in the gospel of God, in which holy ministration I officiate, that the Gentiles may be made an acceptable offering to God sanctified by the pouring seventeen out of the Holy Ghost upon them. I have, therefore, matter of glorying, through Jesus Christ, 18 as to those things that pertain to God, for I shall not venture to trouble you with any concerning myself, but only what Christ hath wrought by me, for the bringing of the Gentiles to Christianity, both nineteen in profession and practice, through mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Ghost, so that, from Jerusalem and the neighboring countries, all along, quite to Illyricum, I have effectually twenty preached the gospel of Christ, but so as studiously to avoid the carrying of it to those places, where it was already planted, and where the people were already Christians lest I should build upon another twenty-one man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not spoken of, they shall see, and they comma twenty-two that have not heard, shall understand. This has twenty-three often hindered me from coming to you, but now, having in these parts no place, where Christ hath not been heard of, to preach the gospel in, and having had, 
for these many years, a desire to come to 24 you, I will, when I take my journey to Spain, take you in my way, for I hope, then, to see you, and to be brought on my way thitherward by you, when I have, for some time, enjoyed your company, and pretty well satisfied my longing, on that account.25 but, at present, I am setting out for Jerusalem, 26 going to minister to the saints there, for it hath pleased those of Macedonia and Achaia to make a contribution for the poor, among the saints of Jerusalem. 27 It hath pleased them to do so, and they are, indeed, their debtors. For, if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, they are bound, on their side, to minister to them for the twenty-eighth support of this temporal life, when, therefore, I have dispatched this business, and put this fruit of my labours into their hands, I will come to you in twenty-nine my way to Spain, and I know that, when I come unto you, I shall bring with me to your full satisfaction, concerning the blessedness, which you receive thirty by the gospel of Christ. Now I beseech you, brethren, by our Lord Jesus Christ, and by the love which comes from the Spirit of God, to join 31 with me in earnest prayers to God for me, that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea, and that the service I am doing there, saints the comma 32 may be acceptable to them, that, if it be the will of God, I may come to you with joy and may be thirty-three refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Sect. 15. Chapter 16. 1. 27. Contents. The foregoing epistle furnishes us with reasons to conclude, that the divisions and offenses, that were in the Roman church, were between the Jewish and Gentile converts, whilst the one, overzealous for the rituals of the law, endeavoured to impose circumcision and other mosaic rites, as necessary to be observed, by all that professed Christianity, and the other, without due regard to the weakness of the Jews, showed a too open neglect of those their observances, which were of so great account with them. St. Paul was so sensible, how much the churches of Christ suffered, on this occasion, and so careful to prevent this, which was a disturbance almost everywhere, as may be seen in the history of the Acts, and collected out of the Epistles, that, after he had finished his discourse to them, which we may observe solemnly closed, in the end of the foregoing chapter, he here, in the middle of his salutations, cannot forbear to caution them against the authors and fermenters of these divisions, and that very pathetically, verse 17, 20. All the rest of this chapter is spent, almost wholly, in salutations. Only the four last verses contain a conclusion, after St. Paul's manner. Text. 1 I commend unto you Phoebe our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at Kencre. 2 That ye receive her in the Lord, as becometh saints, and that ye assist her, in whatsoever business she hath need of you for she hath been a succorer of many, and myself also. 3 Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, 4, who have, for my life, laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. 5 Likewise greet the church that is in their house, salute my well-beloved Epenetus who is the first fruits of a unto Christ. 6. Greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. 7. Salute Andronicus and Junior, my kinsmen and fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. 8. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. 9. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ, and Statues, my beloved. 10. Salute Apels, approved in Christ. Salute them, which are of Aristobulus household. 11. Salute Herodian, my kinsman. Greet them that be of the household of Narcissus, which are in the Lord. 12. Salute Tryphtona and Dryphosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. 13. Salute Rufus, 
chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. 14 Salute Syncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Paterabas, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. 15 Salute Philologus and Julia, Neraus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints which are with them. 16 Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. 17 Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. 18 For they, that are such, serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and, by good words and fair speeches, deceived the hearts of the simple. 19 For your obedience is come abroad done to all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, and simple concerning evil. 20 And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. 21 Timotheus, my work fellow, and Lucius and Jason, and Sosipater, my kinsman, salute you. 22 I Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. 23 Gaius mine host, and of the whole church saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you, and Quartus, a brother. 24 The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. 25 Now to him, that is of power to establish you, according to my gospel, and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret, since the world began. 26 But now is made manifest, and, by the scriptures of the prophets, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations, for the obedience of faith. 27 To God only wise, be glory, through Jesus Christ, for ever. Amen. Paraphrase. 1 I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant. 2 of the church, which is at Kencre, that you receive her, for Christ's sake, as becomes Christians, and that you assist her, in whatever business she has need of you, for she has assisted many, and three me in particular. Salute Priscilla and Aquila my four fellow laborers in the gospel, who have, for my life, exposed their own to danger, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the five Gentiles, greet also the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epenetus, who is six the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. Greet Mary, seven who took a great deal of pains for our sakes. Salute Andronicus and Junia, my kinsfolk and fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who eight also were Christians before me. Greet Amplius, my nine beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in ten Christ, and Statues, my beloved. Salute Apels approved in Christ. Salute those who are of the eleven household of Aristobulus. Salute Herodian my kinsmen. Salute all those of the household of Narcissus, 12 who have embraced the gospel. Salute Tryphtona and Dryphosa, who take pains in the gospel. Salute the beloved Persis, who labored much in the thirteen Lord. Salute Rufus, chosen, or selected to be a fourteen disciple of the Lord, and his mother and mine. Salute Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermas, Paterabas, Hermes, 15 and the brethren who are with them. Salute Philologus, and Julia, Neraus and his sister, and Olympus, 16 and all the saints who are with them. Salute one another with an holy kiss. The churches of Christ salute you. 17 Now I beseech you, brethren, mark those who cause divisions and offenses. Contrary to the doctrine, which 18 you have learned, and avoid them, for they serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own bellies, and by good words and fair speeches, insinuating themselves, 19 deceive well-meaning, simple men, your conversion and ready compliance with the doctrine of the gospel, when it was brought to you, is known in the world, and generally talked of, I am glad, 
for your sakes, that you so forwardly obeyed the gospel. But give me leave to advise you to be wise and cautious in preserving yourselves steady in what is wise and good, but employ no thought, or skill, how to circumvent, or injure another, be in this regard twenty very plain and simple. For God, who is the giver and lover of peace, will soon rid you of these ministers of Satan, the disturbers of your peace, who make divisions amongst you. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. 21 Timothy, my work fellow, and Lucius and Jason, 22 and Sosipater, my kinsman, salute you. I Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. 23 Gaius, mine host, and of the whole church, saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth 24 you, and Quartus a brother. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. 25 Now, to him that is able to settle and establish you in an adherence to my gospel, and to that which I deliver, concerning Jesus Christ, in my preaching, conformable to the revelation of the mystery, 26 which lay unexplained in the secular times, but now is laid open, and, by the writings of the prophets, made known, according to the commandment of the everlasting God, to the Gentiles of all nations, for the bringing them in, to the obedience of the law 27 of faith, to the only wise God be glory, through Jesus Christ, for ever, Amen. Jesus Christ, for ever, Amen. Jesus Christ, for ever, Amen. Jesus Christ, forever. 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 Amen. Jesus Christ, 